2023. The secretary will call the roll. Chair LaFora was absent. Vice Chair Finity. Present. Secretary is here. Board Member Catalanato. Present. Board Member Mutu. Present. Board Member Neely. Present. Board Member Fulham. Present. We have a quorum. Very good. Can we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's my understanding we have no minutes uh, on the agenda for the approval That's this correct. week. And uh, we will be going a little bit out of order. We're waiting for the applicants for one application. So we'll start off the agenda. Carla? Welcome. You can do your work session, actually. That's that's. What this oh, session. okay. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll close the afternoon uh, regular session and uh, convene the afternoon work session, in which we have uh, one item. And you're certainly welcome. Because I got here late. He's going to but he's not here, so I don't know what happened. Good afternoon, Carl. everybody. Good to see you. Carl Donacasa for the applicant. With me is uh, architect Sean Leonard. Sean, good to see you. Good to see you. So this uh, project is, or this site is somewhat familiar, should be somewhat familiar to you. Um, back in 2001, you issued a resolution approving a site plan with certain conditions uh, for the development of this parcel. Sean's going to walk you through what the original approval was and then what the modifications to that approval are. The point of today's discussion is just to introduce you to this new concept and discuss how we want to proceed with the application. Okay. So the, uh, good evening, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, so so uh, um, the original proposal that was presented to you, uh, to, this, to this board, uh, included the development of a six bedroom residence that was going to be um, on the site, and that was a little bit more to the north, and then on the corner was going to be a cafe with uh, four senior uh, housing units on the second floor. Right. So that was a 40 seat cafe, and uh, and then we had the associated parking, which was going to be on the north end of the property there. With the cross access. With the cross access from uh, the loaves and fishes right. here coming in uh, with so that the, the parking would be shared with the back parking of Lowe's and Fishes now. So it all kind of made sense. And then there'd be access out onto Butter Lane um, from, from that, that point there. Uh, the new, what we're now uh, pr proposing to you uh, is we have the. Can you take it off the mic, please? Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> So what we have now is we have the, the you yeah, still have the Lowe's and Fishers parking. We have the same parking that is in the back. Uh, there was uh, the uh, site plan, pre preliminary site plan that was submitted to you. I just want to point out, um, had a dimensional uh, error on the back. It's, uh, it said 14.4 feet to the parking and it was 15 feet. It was just the way, oh, okay. the, the way, the way the dimension hit it. Uh, so we, we, I fixed that there. So it's 15 feet for the parking. So it's exactly what was proposed before. The residence is still the same residence as six bedroom residence that was proposed before. So the difference between really what we're going to now is instead of having the 40 seat cafe and the senior housing, it is proposed to now have uh, two 3,000 square foot, actually they're 27 2,970 square foot buildings that would uh, be for office space retail up on the corner there. Uh, and then we had, um, for that we were able to then just get a, a few more parking spaces right along the side as you came right into the, uh, came, came in from Lowe's and Fishers. What is that gap between the buildings, John? This area here? No, no it's it's running up and down. Oh, yeah. that, that, uh, that right now, um, there was, we were 
toying around with does the buildings have some sort of a connection in this, a way of like a, a, yeah. yeah of a pergola or not. Oh, okay. That, that was that was it. Could it, be like the code requires a fifteen foot separation, foot separation yeah. between the buildings. So the thought was: does the buildings be completely just separate, uh, or does there have some sort of a pergola? And be for pedestrian use. For pedestrian use okay. only. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That would be. And, and how does this new this modification impact the parking relative to the prior uh, application? So the the uh, as far as parking the because now instead of being uh, <clears throat> One uh, per three seats, uh, which is the 40 seats. So, so before we, we needed a total parking spaces of 32. And with the calculations now, we need a total parking spaces of 36. So it's, it goes up by four, which I was able to rework because this was there was less parking that was put on this side here. So I was able to put the parking right right there between the two buildings. And I understand that there was a reserve parking component to the previous approval. Right. So the I, additional parking was what, contemplated. The issue that we had before was that uh, the total sanitary density to be able to do the cafe and the residence and the second floor right. was, was way too much. So now we're proposing the dense, the, that density was going to be at 1,300 gallons per day. And now what we're proposing between the residents and having these two buildings up front, uh, that density is 746. So it's almost half the density. So, so there's a lot less intense use. Have you run any traffic numbers, trip generation numbers of the one use compared to the other? Um, I'm almost thinking this type of use would generate less traffic. Yes. We have, I'm sorry. To we answer your question, run. we haven't. We, have not, run we have not run, but I would agree with you that uh, this would generate less traffic, as because you wouldn't have the cafe, you'd be dealing with spaces that would uh, most likely uh, be operating during the daytime, and then you know they would be shutting down um, for, for the evening, like most stores do, and uh, and or offices, as opposed to a cafe that could go into the night and would probably also be operating you know on, on weekends and things so now um, what stage is the prior was the prior I know we had pre-submission conference did it get all the way to final, the final resolution final resolution yes and then there there was a withdrawal of the application I believe uh, last year in July the, okay. well the applicant withdrew from from progressing with the applicant okay yeah. so you're proposing then a, a new proposal site plan proposal so yeah, well, that's one of the conversations we wanted to have is how you wanted to process this. Right. Um, given that portions of this remain the same and that the uh, impacts on the lot are uh, certainly with respect to septic specifically and gross floor area are reduced, um, would we be able to start this and essentially, you know, would we be able to amend the previous resolution? That was issued by this board and start this past the pre-submission process. Past the pre-submission. Past past pre-submission. So so still subject to public review, public consideration. So it's almost hearing. it's not an amendment. It's you're going to just go to pre-submission, pre-submission conference on this new proposal. Is that what you're? Not not well. We were suggesting perhaps we could go right to final review, subject to public <coughs> hearing and the like. Is that allowable with the use change? Um, and just to, for the board's edification, you all received a letter earlier. Mm -hmm. that yes. Yeah. A lot of interest from the neighbors. I've gotten letters from two attorneys. Um, so, and we were, I want to hear obviously what the board's preference is, yeah. but obviously we'll, something we'll discuss next week between the attorneys to see if everybody's yeah. on the same page. Well, I mean, I, I was going to raise that because yeah. it's, it sounded like um, what we were hearing from the um, neighbor's attorney is that we really need to start over. Well, I, I'm thinking we don't have to make that determination now. The, the, the sentiment, I believe, would be to get this back out to public hearing. Um, the avenue we would probably take is to schedule a pre-submission conference, Claire. That could be a way to go. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> without making a determination, as once, the, the, once we schedule the conference, we take the public comment, written comment, then we can make a determination as to, to uh, what mechanism we can get to the final but it's important to get the pre-submission process initiated. So we're, we're not, I don't think 
Christine, we don't have to make that decision now. You don't. If you, have, if you want to set it down for pre-submission, I think that would satisfy I you. think that's what the, app, the applicant's agreeing to that I, as well. I would yeah. like to, to, if that's the way this board's leading, I'd like to get that process started <coughs> right, as soon as possible. Right, right. Okay. Um, and it doesn't hold up the process, and you know, then we can see once we get the public comment and then so forth. We do all the referrals, right? No, pre-submission has no referrals. They don't have referrals. It. No, it's, it's for the public to give <coughs> feedback to you before you make an environmental decision or, you know, that okay. step on the yeah. project. But, it, uh, it is a but we will have to redo referrals on this, right? Fire. We would. We, in yeah. any case, we would have to do that at the okay. site plan stage, yes. So that's administrative stuff that has to be done anyway, right. you know. So what do we need? Um, well, we're not in session. <laughs> Do they have a completed sub submission app? They have the plans, which is great. <coughs> I would just need the application within the day or two for us to, to start our part of the process, yes. Can we schedule it for? We could, if the planning board's a, um, sure. agreeable. And you, you put on the record that you're going to submit an application to me tomorrow. Will, yes, <laughs> submit you an application. It's and a two-pager. And Sorry, the fee. <laughs> Don't forget and the, the fee. fee. And the fee. And the fee. Do we have a proposed date, Claire? Uh, I would say February 9th is open right now. And what are we yeah. calling the application? Loaves and fish is still, right? Just so we're clear, you have to have the plans in some tomorrow. Yeah, for I will put that in the resolution. Tomorrow. I have the plans. I just would need the app actual application. By tomorrow. By tomorrow. Sure. And the fee. And the fee. So <laughs> I think, uh, okay, we can't take an action now because we're not in session. Yeah. So um, We'll do an add-on. We'll do it as an add-on, and we'll set that. Actually, we could, once we adjourn out of here, we can do it, take it up right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So any other questions from board members? I just want to put onto the record the organization that I lead, East End Food Institute, has a business relationship with loaves and fishes, so I'll remove myself from okay. the discussion Great. on that. Okay, great. That's noted. Thank you. So um, very good. We'll uh, close the uh, afternoon work session, convene the afternoon regular session. You can stay put. And our first item uh, is going to be a walk-on item entitled Loaves and Fishes. And our action is to set a pre-submission conference for February 9th at 6 p.m. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion, motion by Gloria, second by George. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? We Aye. have uh, one abstention. We have five yes and one absent. One Thank recusal. One recusal. No, Sorry. yeah, one recusal. Thank you. Recusal. I'm sorry, I called it abstention. It's a recusal. And five yes and one absent. I hope I got that right. Yep. Great. Good seeing you. Good to Carl. see you. you too, Good to see uh, you, Dennis. Carl. Take care. Pretty well. Um, do we have Anthony and Sarah people? Yes, uh, they are. They, they are. Okay, they we're going to go a little bit out of order because of uh, time, some scheduling conflicts. We're going to go okay. right to the uh, the seven. I don't. Uh, yeah, nine eleven um, Flanders LLC. Um, item ten on your agenda. How are you? Good. Welcome. How's everybody? Good to nice see, to see you. Again. you. All right, so um, if I, can I just yes, please. Yeah, so the board please. right remember I gave you a bunch of information last time. We've yes, been looking at this project um, for a while now. This is for the um, redevelopment of what was a uh, gas station uh, use at the traffic circle there on Riverside with a new gas station uh, with six pumps and a 7-Eleven convenience store. Uh, we've been working through the secret process. The applicant gave us um, some revised plans and some additional information that I gave to the planning board. Uh, in addition to all the original information that was submitted by the applicant, uh, as well as the original traffic study, uh, because we're trying to work through the secret process. We initially were talking, um, you know, we were looking at a positive declaration, and then we had some new information uh, come in. Um, you know, happened. You know, uh, looking at everything, looking at the new information. I don't know how the board feels, but um, what you know, the big issue with this is obviously the traffic, traffic, the traffic right. circle, right? I mean, that's that's going to be the biggest one. Obviously, design issues we could deal with architecture like we normally do and then all that stuff. So traffic uh, is a big issue. Um, and so my thought is is that with the board agreeing today, um, and I've, I have sent out um, requests uh, for proposals, is that in order to do this appropriately, that we should hire a traffic uh, consultant to uh, advise the board as to the study that was done, uh, any questions that the board has, and then if there's any other design or mitigations uh, that we can consider to incorporate, uh, it should come from the traffic engineer as opposed to uh, the planner uh, review. So in other words, if the applicant submitted traffic data, you, we'd like to get a professional set of eyes on that to, to advise us. That's that's yeah. what I would like to do. And the applicants here, do, uh, go ahead, uh, please just- We have no objection to Identify that. yourself for the record. Yes, thank you. Uh, Keith Brown, Pat Altman, DeLeo, LLP, 538 Broad Hall Road, Street 301 West, Melville, New York, 11747. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, before we got started, uh, Mr. Trezor and I spoke briefly outside. He got me up to date as um, 
what he was going to recommend. We don't have any objection with that. We actually have been pressing um, to get the traffic consultant hired as quickly as possible so we can have that review so you can have a better understanding from your point of view any potential recommendations that, that could be made. We've submitted a very thorough and detailed uh, traffic impact study. That's why we believe that a POSDEC is not necessary because we believe it's not going to reveal anything else that hasn't already been submitted. Uh, there's been quite a lot of documentation that's been submitted relative to this application that is now within all the new board <coughs> members' purview that you can take a look at and, and get up to speed with where the application's at. What, wasn't there also concerns about parking and and maneuverability so, within the so, site. So yes, and so and, and, and that came out of the pre-submission conference. Part of those questions that we raise uh, is it, it, part of the review that we would want from the, the traffic consultant is that because those were some of the questions that they had. So internal circulation, mm -hmm. they have reduced the size of the building by a little bit and reduced the amount of parking variance that they're asking for, which is why I wanted to get this information to the traffic consultants to, yeah. so they have the new information. But that would be part of the review, Gloria, is the internal circulation and how uh, if queuing would work and all the rest of it. So mm -hmm. that, that would come out of the review as well. Okay, because that, that, that was definitely a concern aside from the traffic circle itself. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I should, should reiterate that point. Yeah, and how much was the convenience store reduced? It was over 3,000? Well, the, the total size of the building was uh, just over 3,000 square feet. And then, uh, and then, of course, there's the actual just the retail space, as you all know. We've had this discussion in detail. It's been reduced by 200 square feet uh, as of now. Um, and then what we could look at after we have our traffic study is to see, you know, what what comes out of, of any recommendations. Because we've, we've looked at like a seven to 800 square foot convenience store. And I think when I say that, I that's the internal, that's not the full size of the building. That's the retail space. Well, the retail space inside, I think, is roughly 1,500 and change, and the, the original size of the building, uh, and then 3,000 square feet total. And I believe everything. But our close. average in this town is more like seven or eight hundred. Yeah, well, you'll see. Uh, and we're going to, when we do go through the secret process, they provide an analysis. Obviously, we're going to provide our detailed analysis as well. There's a range of, of sizes, um, okay. you know, in, in, in there. Um, you know, because what, what, what's hard, Lauren, as you know, is, um, is uh, nothing's codified, right, uh, in terms mm -hmm. of maximum size or anything. Yep. So, no. um, but they did reduce it, and, um, and we do have an analysis that shows what the other sizes are, so we're going to do a comparison um, okay. and based on any number of factors, size of the property, number of pumps, all that stuff. One thing we'd ask you to bear in mind is that when you compare this proposed convenience store to the other two gas stations on the circle, number one, one doesn't even have a working bathroom. They have a porta potty outside, and the other one has a single unisex bathroom. We are proposing two fully ADA-compliant bathrooms and the whole entire store will actually be ADA compliant. What I mean by that is, you know when you go into a convenience store, you'll have the racks of shelving, they're called gondolas actually. Um, this store will allow for someone who is wheelchair bound to actually maneuver around the store without having to bump into shelving. Um, so we haven't even gotten to the part of the discussion of reducing possibly a bathroom to go to a unisex bathroom. Um, but that's part and parcel why the store is the size it is. Um, and it's about 1,400 square feet on the, on the inside. But I think the worthy analysis is to look at, I think there was the East Quag store um, also that we've submitted. But we have an outside planning consultant um, who has submitted not one but two reports. And we think it's worthwhile for you to review those reports because he did a very nice comparative analysis to um, the other stores, not only on the circle in Riverside, but also elsewhere in the town. Okay. Did you have anyone on your team on Zoom, Mr. Brown? I didn't know. Actually, it's Jefferson Murphy. Oh, okay. Um, he's, he's listening in. I asked him. He was having trouble hearing the last application, but I just texted him. He said he's, unfortunately, he got pulled down to Miami um, where um, he has a relative going to school down there. Oh, okay. Um, so he's actually listening in on Zoom. Okay, great. Okay. Great. He's actually coming in. Oh. He's, he's coming in on, okay. I heard Charles mention someone. The voice of Oz. <laughs> Hello, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Jeff. Jeff, we can hear you. All right, I just started my video also. How, how's everybody today? Good. We've got your visual um, too. Yeah, I'm calling you from uh, sunny Miami. It's it's a balmy 74 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> All 
uh, I'm down here with Karen and uh, my kids taking uh, Sean back to college. So uh, thank you for the opportunity for um, having the Zoom as an option. It makes things a lot easier uh, for everybody. And as uh, Keith uh, mentioned, uh, I will be uh, testifying later on, not today, about uh, how we believe the size of the building is comparable to those that have been improved elsewhere in the town. And it prepared a number of very thorough detailed reports and comparisons of that. Um, so I'd ask that you uh, dust them off, the reports off, and then take a look at them. And uh, when we um, uh, have our next meeting, we can have that discussion. Great. That's, that, that, that'll be very helpful, Jeff. Your, your volume was a little bit low, but we heard the substance of your comments. Um, and if you can even forward that digitally, whenever it's ready, uh, Anthony will distribute to the board. Yeah, I highlighted some of the um, uh, things that uh, I saw uh, under the former EAF Part 3 prepared by staff, and I, I highlighted some of the things that I think uh, were faulty in it um, that I would actually <coughs> be reconsidered. Um, and obviously the EAF Part 3 would have to be revised based upon revised plans as well. Good. And you, you were you were party to our discussion about getting the traffic consultant to review the, okay. Yeah, Good. yeah, that was expected. Okay, now your volume's back up. <laughs> Something, whatever yeah, button I'm you leaning, hit. I'm leaning, I'm leaning closer to the. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, Good. I'm trying to stay away from the vacationers behind me over having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Um, and I have, just let you know, I have read the traffic impact study. I do support it. Uh, the proposal to get a consultant because I do have a number of questions that's good after reading it that's great so and I think I could so what we'll do is when we come back <clears throat> we'll have some choices uh, that we could choose from we can move forward with that and then we can start giving the information you know from the board and the applicant to to the consultant okay so I think you what you're hearing the process is moving, we're advancing the process mr. Brown <coughs> yes that's agreeable to you we're, I, I we're delighted to hear that there's no action I mean we're not on any deadline we don't no do no now we're in the secret process and we're going through that so we're, 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 we're do we have to do anything to hire the we will next time I'm gonna have numbers so the board can see okay. who's who's responded okay. and the applicant knows that I've asked them for hard copies of the new sets of information okay. we'll get those hard copies I already texted my staff Wonderful. they're gonna get them over to uh, to Mr. Trezza. Um, if I just may, I'd like to just note for the record, Amanda LaRosa from Stonefield Engineering. She's on the Zoom call. She's the outside traffic engineer. We also have Mr. David Fittner from High Point Engineering, who's the site civil engineer. And I also would like the record to note that Mr. Andrew Sleepoy, who is representative of his family, uh, the Sleepoys have owned this property, by the way, since 1965. Mm. Um, so this is not a uh, speculative build. This is not a... Um, you know, find a tenant, build it out, and flip it. Um, they've owned this property for many, many decades, and they would, um, it's laid fallow, as everyone knows, and for those who don't know, uh, for about 10 years. So, yeah. um, and th there was a previous application, probably about six years ago, I'd say, uh, for a Cumberland Farms <coughs> that was 5,000 square feet. So this is uh, almost half of that. So. Well, we're certainly anxious to get see the site uh, enhanced and developed. Yes. So as has been. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we'll okay. be back next time then. We will get this going for you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. And Jeff, thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Use suntan lotion if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again and, for coming. And thank you for accommodating me in my schedule. Anytime. Thanks, Mr. Brown. Right. Have a nice day. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Uh, Anthony, I think, did you want us? Are we? I think, uh, I think the oh, uh, Mike, Michael, Mike Lane is here. Is and Janice is here too. Wow, okay. Two we're we're going to jump back. In and, yeah. <laughs> I thought you missed us after yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. We did. Um, we're moving to item two on the agenda uh, special exception standards for golf courses. We had, and we had a chance to, uh, you circulated the uh, proposed legislation. No. Yes, we have copies here if anyone okay. didn't have them. So, yeah, so we're actually, the public hearing is coming up um, February 14th. And this is related to, as you know, for many, many years, the planning board has been approving housing accessory on golf courses and basically setting the standards. It's worked just fine. Um, when challenged, <laughs> recently it was looked at and said well this has issues like it's except it's it, it if they have cooking and sleeping quarters it can't be designated under that accessory definition 
So we looked at changing the accessory definition. And, you know, because it says now, except ag housing and except restaurant housing, and we were going to say, like, except golf course housing. And then we thought, like, why don't we just make it its own thing? Because it really is. Because it's dormitory. Instead of, like, a, an exception, it is something. We know we have all these hundreds of acres in golf course use. Let's put the dormitory, you know, living quarters um, for golf course employees as its own definition and its own you know, regulations. So that's what the town board's been doing. And so they came up with this, that it has its own definition, living quarters for golf course employees, and that is defined as group or dormitory housing in a building or buildings that may include cooking and sleeping for employees and is located on the same property as an 18-hole golf course. So if you're a nine-hole golf course, you're out of luck. You have to be an 18-hole golf course. I was just going to ask you, was because of the <laughs> amount of property, or yeah. was that just you know, a, like, yeah. and all the golf courses, as you know, are mm -hmm. mostly mm -hmm. they're previously in the past they were approved by special exception, then they did away with that, then they were approved by PDDs, then they did away with that. So there's only if you have a permitted golf course. The town there. owns like, a nine-hole golf course. Yeah, you wouldn't right. be able to put it there. Okay. And they know that. They looked at that. Okay. So, box so, a box can't have it. No. No. Um, Which so I think is the only nine hole in the town? Yes. No. There's another? Bridgehampton. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I yeah. almost forgot. Yeah, yeah. Bridgehampton. Yep. Um, so, the amendment would be adding this little special exception standard, uh, 162.24, living quarters for golf course employees. So, saying that it has to be on the same property. Like, you can't just rent some other random single house lot and be like, this is my golf course housing. You know, it has to be on the golf course. Um, B, they started to put some setbacks. There was a lot of co conversation because really it always is case specific and, and the board understood that your board has done a good job citing these things based on the context. So it's hard to put these rules in, but at the same time they felt that 150 feet was the same thing as the ag housing ag labor housing and so it was uh, similar to that so they put it in here um, but gave you the opportunity to approve reduced setbacks say it's a golf course say there's a property line but in all cases it's still the golf course so you don't have to do 150 feet from an indivisible you know an invisible line so it gives you the ability to amend that without having to go to the ZBA um, C was related to the number of employees. There was a lot of discussion about this. They picked 50 golf course employees to permitted to reside on the premises. Many golf courses have many, many more employees than 50. Usually it's the professional caddies and those type of uh, staff that live in the staff housing. And we tried to just capture, you know, Sabonic has around 40, Atlantic, the last approval was 38 or so you know so like 50 just seem like you know within the limits of what has already been done um, and th there was also a lot of discussion about like you know not crowding people into buildings so only 25 employees per building um, <coughs> living quarters D says living quarters for golf course employees may be located in separate detached building it should say S it, oh a separate detached building or may be attached or combined as long as it doesn't exceed 30 so some like a little bit of design guidance here and that the maximum should not exceed 7,000 square feet um, with a total of 14 if more than one building is proposed um, and then they want to give the guidance that the massing and associated parking facility arrangements are situated to reduce and minimize impacts on any adjacent neighboring properties. And that's the whole point. Not to like push all the housing all the way, you know, I've got this huge golf course and let's go all the way to the lot line to the, you know, and annoy the neighbor. We don't want to do that. We want to set it back 150 feet, buffer it. We don't want the parking. We don't want to bother anybody. And that's the idea. You don't want to see it from the road. Right. Well, you could see it from the road, like some one of the golf courses has frontage on the highway, and like so, what if you saw some housing there? Like, it's not necessarily a bad thing. So it's really context specific, and so it really gave you still all that opportunity to review it, and you know. Jen, is this seasonal or year round? Year round. Year round. But typically, so a lot of times they leave and go to yeah, wherever, yeah. the Bahamas or some other place, so it doesn't have to be. I'm almost questioning the 30. I understand what the 32 feet 
foot height requirement because it's residential height. But typically these are surrounded by acres and acres. And I'm wondering, do we, is there, would it be productive in the interest of saving sprawl to allow for <coughs> next, some additional height as we do in water, some waterfront applications where you can go to 40 feet get an extra story. So you're gonna get three stories rather than yeah, two. Yeah, then you have three stories. Um, um, we'll put that as a comment. Yeah, and I'll also make my pitch as I always do. And Lorraine, I'm sure, will, will back me for, for the uh, provision of solar. Um, th this is new code, and the only way we're gonna get solar power is to codify it. Okay. Um, so. Okay, so I have allow for additional height and provide for solar. Solar. Um, and then, of course, it just on the table of uses is just basically it's a special exception where a golf course is currently permitted only. So, is there any consideration it. for this number of units to have an on site wastewater treatment or do they go into this IA? They IAs? would, um, <coughs> that's a good question. All new construction is required to have an IA by the Suffolk County Health Department. Yeah. Um, so, right. I think that would be covered. Mm -hmm. And we require it too. Right. From I an mean, engineering from an, perspective, from where does the where's the tipping point on? I'm not an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all new construction, yeah. For wastewater treatment. Between that for and an the sewage treatment, sewage treatment plant. Is that what you're yeah. How many units would you have to have to make it? Oh, wow. I mean, you're talking uh, hundreds of acres, and then you'd have to really do that whole like density kind of calculation. And the, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think you'd be there for like these small little single occupant dormitory type of, mm -hmm. you know, but if you were to subdivide the golf course, then, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. I don't know that uh, you would need an STP for these little things. Would an IA I mean, be required I, if they retrofitted yeah, the existing yeah, build? Yeah. More than 25%, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's Suffolk County now, so that's not even us. Right, right. Well, well, it's us too. We're encouraged that this is finally get codified, getting into the code. Yeah. 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 Great. So, do you have any other comments for this one? No, I think we're. Can you? Can we adopt our report that. based yeah. on our comments that you have? We'll allow for and district, we can move this comment. forward to the town board. Do we have a motion to adopt the report? Motion. I have a question. Sure. Mm -hmm. Parking. Mm -hmm. Is that? It does. It says yeah. the massing and associated parking facility arrangements shall be so situated to reduce and minimize any impacts on adjacent neighboring properties. So the parking is still on you to design in the site plan. Yeah. Well, then do we talk about um, electric charging stations? You can make that as a comment. They opened a can of worms this morning. <laughs> well, <laughs> so that's what yeah. happens when you get up at 5.15. <laughs> do you want me to write provide for solar <laughs> slash EV charging? Yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, this is with yeah. your with recommendation. With yeah. new construction, we should yeah. Yeah. Not, the reality is that we should always say that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Ten years, fifteen years from now, many employees may be driving electric cars yeah. and need a they place will. to charge. Sure. According yeah. to statistic. Yeah. I'm just Luckily, to in the golf the course setting, I think that they would probably be happy to, you know, do that. I just glimpsed right. that whole beautiful project with all these extension know, cords really running <laughs> out of windows. Oh my God, what kind yeah. of planners are we, right? I, I, I Come on. Really I had to get a it chuckle good. and I was, I was actually, I read yeah. that like at 7.30 <laughs> drinking my coffee. <laughs> Okay, the, these PVC chains are very. So we do have a motion by Craig on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. Second, second by Gloria. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We have six yes, one absent to adopt the report. Michael you have another one for us. One more. Yes. Okay, and item this three. Is, um, it's topical, given how our conversation is ended. Yes. Yes. <coughs> yeah. So solar, solar, sorry solar. if I like. So Mike had written the battery storage yeah. code and worked very closely on the yeah. this solar code um, and then I kind of amended a lot of it but so that's why I'm here some of it is might need some explanation but I think it's <coughs> this is basically to allow solar as its own independent use like a commercial solar mm -hmm. array a field of solar right instead North, of just North, North Sea landfill well that um, mm -hmm. but more so you know private landowner can now avail themselves to our code would be potentially able to and put solar you know as a land use 
in addition to batteries or just solo on its own, you know, mm -hmm. just solar arrays. So, but, but I found that the, any renewable energy facility over 20 megawatts, we are then like shut out and it goes to the state, like the PSC reviews it, which is the Public Service Commission. <coughs> so this code, it just is an approval for under 20 megawatts and then we just don't allow over 20 megawatts and then when the PSC if someone went to them they would go well the, the local municipality doesn't even allow it so we don't have to have this battle with the state which other municipalities have had I think that would help us is there there maintain reason, our own control is there any reason why we would want something that large no, no. And honestly, the way the land uses are and the and I was going to say, I think, I think that's the cost of land would, wouldn't, wouldn't it yeah. wouldn't, It wouldn't even no. get to that point. Like, well, you're not going to get 800 acres of solar in Southampton because if you had 800 acres, you'd be putting half Fancy houses, houses or something. <laughs> 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 we don't even have 800 acres to put it on, so there's that. Um, so the big premise of all of this commercial solar is like, well, where would you put it? And then we, we devised this... Um, if you skip to page, I'm sorry, it gets into like we already have solar codes, so kind of a lot of the beginning is like amending like things that we already do, like residential and accessory, like where we put it. But the, the so if you and then how to do it as a land use is starts on page 10 um, solar energy systems, medium and large scale. So, so you can see that. B talks about opportunity areas and then avoidance areas. And the first part of that is like, well, if, if I was going to put it anywhere, I would first want to put it in previously disturbed locations, like a landfill, a sand mine, a light industrial parcel that's already been cleared, a junkyard, existing parking lot. It does say golf courses where a scenic view shed is not compromised. You know, you might have, you don't even see it. Right. And um, previously disturbed areas, roofs, Rooftops, municipal properties, um, parcels that have been previously <coughs> cleared, recharge basins or other set-asides through the subdivision process. So that's where we want to steer people to. We want you to go there first. And then we want to avoid flood hazard zones, APOD, um, you know, like that green for green. We don't want to have to clear to put solar lands. And um, we do exactly, we say not ag lands at this point because only if it's for the farm because you know you've been sitting here all these years preserving farmland for the view sheds and community yeah. character and this and that and we and it's to just keep agriculture. to keep food <laughs> and, and we want food production eat the tomatoes. so it's better to just start out with just you can have solar for the farm operations but we're not talking about filling up farms with solar although there's a yeah. lobby to do that um, <clears throat> keeping it out of the open space green belt areas historic you know cultural resources, designated like CPF lands, except municipal facilities like a landfill, um, scenic corridors, wetlands, and Central Pine Barrens core. You Obviously, that would not be a good idea and compatible growth area when you can't meet the standards. So let's say you could meet the standards. That's fine, but if you can't meet the standards, then it's an avoidance area. Um, also, it's tricky in those places where you have clearing restrictions because your your solar access is not guaranteed, right? Like you, the next door neighbor <coughs> is going to have this shade on you, so you really don't you really want it in more open but space areas. But there are many areas. disturbed areas in the core, even in the core, you know, former landmines and you know brownfields. We do um, true, and that is a good point. Maybe you want to make that as a comment. Yeah. Central Pine Barren Core <coughs> Preservation Area that there are disturbed lands in the core. To the extent but that would it you could be located in previously disturbed areas. You know. But would you need what you, would you need to be in order to, to install and maintain and access? Is that going to be involved clearing in the core then? Well, well presumably previously disturbed areas will regenerate. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of these former sand mines. Some of them Such as former <laughs> sand mines. That does, because we say sand mines, but then we have sand mines in the core. Yeah. So that, oh, they're stuck in the there. middle. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, that's a good point. So I'm going to add that as a comment, because I okay. think that's a good thing to say. Uh, Landmines. Land this may seem like a silly question, but that's what I do. Um, <laughs> so approach, approach zones for aircraft, like by, air, by um, airports. Do, do the panels, like any large scale, 
you know, any kind of reflection that may interfere <coughs> with a pilot on, you know, visual flight rules coming Actually, in? I researched this, and it, it's not there, a, right? really a thing. I mean, yeah. a lot of air airports are now uh, putting solar panels on. Uh, I mean, we can double check. The county at Gabrowski has solar panels. Mm -hmm. On the, on the well, that is my silly question. Yeah. No, it's not no, it, it was a concern, no. and yeah. it was something we had to look at. Yeah. Well, didn't, didn't we hear that from the, um, the the Amazon people when we wanted to put solar on the roof of their building, <coughs> and they said we, we we can't do it because the airport won't let us? Could be true, because but if they've we got, tried to get solar easy. when that we first did that PDD, remember, and it was like a real hard problem. So. I, I don't know how they could have solar at the airport, but then question a building adjacent to the airport having solar on its roof. Well, when we're in within <coughs> a certain distance of an airport, we have to refer to the county, and if it wasn't allowed, they would be the first ones to tell us. They have no so. control. Of, the airport doesn't have control over the outer buildings off their site. Maybe that was their but concern. I'm pretty sure I, I heard Claire is shaking her head yes. That we that yes, that question. Yeah, and that was the answer we got from. So we never really Black referred Black. it to the county for for refusal. This was just the applicant saying that it was yeah. allowed. Yeah. The airport may be reluctant because they don't have control over over structures that are not on site. So if there is a problem with the Amazon facility, they'd have no recourse to address it, to take it down and modify it. That might have been their concern. So are you looking to add a comment where they add an avoidance area of airport approaches or otherwise not permitted by FAA or well, something like that? Section 3I says all solar panels should have anti-reflective coating to prevent glare, so that yeah. that kind of resolves that issue. Anyway, the, the right. Glare was, we did speak to the industry about glare, and mm -hmm. they assured us that, that I guess, the <coughs> technology had improved. Yeah, the earlier ones did have glare. Mm -hmm. So in looking back at this, Mike and I realized like we designated small scale solar as up to 5,000 square feet, medium scale as between 5,000 square feet and five acres, and then large scale as five acres to 20 acres. So the question is the medium scale and the large scale pretty much follow the same process. Is there any benefit to saying medium scale, which is a smaller arrays, get some kind of quicker review process or they're both just special except I have it as they're both still just special yeah, exceptions. A lot of so times you might be near residences and you'd want to have the process mm -hmm. you know right. robust process. So the question is is there any point in delineating large versus medium if it's the same process? No. We define small, medium, large yeah. but the medium large follow the same process. Then just why have two sets of Right, why even call it that? Yeah. It doesn't even matter. Just What's all are considered in the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, because when size we initially way. started this, we were thinking <laughs> tiers and like a cell tower or something. Tier yeah. one was like you go fast. Tier two was so, maybe so. What's the difference in process between small exactly, right. and medium and large? Small is like less than five thousand square okay. feet, and you can go through an administrative review for okay, that. So <laughs> medium and large are the same. It's site a plan. special exception special site plan. Exception. I was thinking, do you want to just make one a site plan and the other a special exception site plan? Or it didn't. We didn't write it that way. But then we're just rethinking. Like, why do we even say medium and large? Mm -hmm. I just go state what up to this size is goes through one process, and this size and over goes through the other process. Right. So it's really just small and large. You're not making you know, small, medium, no large is kind of judgmental. Or <laughs> <laughs> the medium doesn't really do anything. Yeah, well, so, Being so, medium doesn't get you any quicker through a process. That's why we usually tier them out like this, yeah. in terms of how how yeah. you go through the sh stream of review. Mm. So is there any, you know, if we're, the thought was if there's anything we can do for the medium scale, but I know we have all these special exception standards, so I don't, I don't know. <coughs> Not really. Doesn't make sense. I guess it just, okay. So I don't know if you want to make that comment. The town board has already through their process and already written okay. it this way. You may want to say there's no sense in differentiating between medium and large. <coughs> mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay. <coughs> So just over 5,000 square foot goes through site plan special a exception. site plan special exception. Yeah. yeah. See, sp site plan is one thing. Special exception means like you may not be permitted, <coughs> like more than five acre, you know, right. maybe depending on if you meet these things. Um, I would also mention that Mike and I looked up there, they went through a whole secret for solar. Mm -hmm. And it's a type two action when it's on the thaw opportunity areas we were talking about. 
So it like a landfill or, or those t um, brown fields or places like that are actually, if it's less than 25 acres and it's a landfill, it's a type two action. The other ones, the other places, like if you are clearing more than 10 acres, it's still a type one action. <coughs> so. Right. so so this was drafted with the by you guys with the assistance of state documents and industry yeah, documents well, like best practices mm -hmm. kind yeah. of uh, we looked at all the state New York State and we also at least I do I tend to look at Massachusetts because they're you know we have a lot of like right. Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard Cape and Cape Cod and like mm -hmm. these places that are yeah, um, you know and Claire went through a bunch of codes also you know <coughs> early on in this so we took the best of everything Kind yeah, of put it don't, together. Why reinvent it? Yeah. So um, but then, then we found the nicer to guide the guidance documents for the secret, which we were happy to find. It's a type two action in many instances, but you still have control when if they're clearing more than ten acres. <clears throat> still a type one action. So this is really pretty cut and dry. We we try to organize it like well. Um, I would just make the also comment that just just now when we were going over it, we realized there was some Scrivener errors. In the tables, the sections, section eight <coughs> should say residential table of use and reference the right section. So if you don't mind, I'd put that as a comment so that way we can correct yes, it. Yes, I would only, I would only um, bring attention on page 15, number seven, this decommissioning. These yep. are, um, unlike, it's, maybe you can clarify more. I mean, are you envisioning performance bonds? <coughs> yeah. I mean, it's not. Performance bonds, we usually think of the term performance bond. It's to perform a certain, um, a certain action, a certain improvement. And once that performance is completed and, and inspected, then it's released. This is almost like, first of all, I think it's going to be cumbersome, number one. Um, number two, the, uh, the difficulty of the Department of, of tracking and maintaining bonds. They're usually letter of credits. They expire. Um, they have to be renewed by resolution. I've seen a whole slew of them fall through the cracks. I mean, it, it, in the reality, if, if the town had to enter to decommission one of these facilities, the recourse is, is I would think, the, the property. Um, the, the, the property itself, it would, it would be an a lean on the property, and you could gain <coughs> com conformance compliance in that respect. I don't know. I just think, um, you know you know what I'm talking about, Christine? I do. I do. So would have you have a maintenance bond going? These are 20, 30-year 30 30 bonds yeah. that would have to be monitored, maintained. Um, Maybe it's might you might want to recommend like some kind of contractual obligation. More <coughs> so you could do that. Or a covenant. Yeah, covenant or yeah. contractual covenant, obligation. Yeah. What, what, did we, what did we do with with the battery storage. Yeah. Decommissioning fund. Performance bond. That's yeah. why we did and the money. same thing yeah. here. So I mean, to, me, yeah. to me, they <laughs> should we get be. A, we got a decommission fund, uh, a plan, and a fund. They have to pay to yeah. the fund afterwards. I mean, I you think they, they, the sh they, they, should be, they should be treated the same, it seemed to me. We, um, we did this again because we did it in the bat, but I agree with you, Dennis. It is cumbersome, yeah. and it is sort of hard to track. And Unless they and pay a one-time fee, maybe for, for a portion of that that's held in escrow, held in a fund, and properly invested, you know, 30 better, years if that they, they want to... They were on the... What's that? The, the property owner should be on the... Yeah. It should be on their dime. It's just once you get the yeah. town involved, then... I would just make them put an escrow and a contractual obligation, which is more intense than just a code provision, right? It's like a code right. is one thing and like being in a contract. I don't know if the town attorneys would want us to... Have some, I think, a covenant probably more than I a contract. Like a covenant. covenant, yeah. All right, escrow, with, escrow, evidence of escrow with a covenant. Yeah, covenant. But I, then you have, then you <coughs> should be changing your cell, your battery storage code. And it would trigger. It would we be recorded on title, because if this facility were ever transferred, <coughs> the new owners would they then have to re-engage re yeah. in the in mm -hmm. the co you know in the, whatever contractual agreement we have. And they can okay. contract between the two of them to make yeah. them responsible. Okay, yeah. that's fine. So, and then the other comment was, should the board agree? You should change battery yeah, storage. Yeah, amend the battery storage. Because mm. they should, it yeah, seems logical, should they should be treated the same yeah, way. True. Okay. Good point. That's fine. So, and then it's just sort of a lot of it is just what you need to submit, what we're looking for in the review. Um, I don't really have much else to say other than, you know, we tried to make it 
fairly straightforward. We're looking to yeah. want to have these things. Yeah. So we're not trying to make it so cumbersome that someone doesn't want to put it in. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we want to always protect the neighboring properties. So, so any other comments? So, so I mean, on page 15 also, item 7 does talk about a performance bond. Yeah. But item L also talks about decommissioning fund that the owner should pay into. Right, so that comment that, will be on both of these yeah. items. You have to amend the whole section. <coughs> Which is fun. Well, we'd be, yeah, we'd be looking at letter K, I suppose, with the whole decommissioning. And it would have to be looked at in its entirety, probably. Yeah. Re revamped yeah. if their town board is What's so What's the best fine. way to do it? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's fine. So do you have enough comments to generate a report and we can act on that? And sure, and my comments from you were that, you know, the disturbed area, the, the conflict between you may have, you say that a land, um, sand mine or a landfill is an opportunity and at the same time you say it's an avoidance in the core, so we want to just rectify that. The differentiation between the medium and large scale, the table of use that I mentioned, we had some Scrivener errors on, and the decommissioning fund. Good for both. Uh, for both, for both and that it, you know what you said, I wrote down, Dennis, and that if you're going to be changing that, you should change the battery storage code. Great. Okay, with those comments, we'll do. We have a motion to, to adopt the report. Motion. Motion by Glorian. Second. Second by George. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? We have six yes, one absent, and thanks to Michelangelo as always for guiding us and, and Janice too for guiding us through this new Absolutely. technology. Yeah, he does all the research. Mike, I do all the Mike time. always has something in our <laughs> inbox every week, like check this out. Great, thank you all. Thanks, for thanks, Mike. Mike. thanks, 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 <laughs> thanks for coming in. All right, we're gonna keep rolling. All right, uh, Anthony, did you want to? Yeah, keep I, I have four, five, and six. So okay, I'll, let's, I'll let's go for it. Uh, the uh, number four is Padilla, uh, Joseph Padilla. I took this over from um, Jackie. Um, it's a final subdivision application. It's a three lot plan involving two properties, <coughs> totaling just over 68,000 square feet uh, in the R20 zoning district, aquifer protection overlay district. It's in Noyak. Uh, there are two through lots, uh, Ridge Road and Bayview Drive West, uh, with two existing residences. Um, and the subdivision plan for which the pre application was done was for a three lot plan, maintain the existing house on this one lot, the existing house uh, back here, uh, and then the third lot would uh, access off of Bridge Road. Um, property is subject to clearing restrictions and, uh, and is also in the, um, in addition to the APOD into the uh, uh, archeological sensitive area. We did get a report on this one. Um, so just going through the resolution, it's a pretty simple subdivision. The pre-app report didn't have any major recommendations in terms of buffers or anything like that. Um, so just uh, real quick, oh, with page 18 in your packet, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's where it starts. And so in 18, so the resolution is written. Um, Starts off with the findings, pretty typical, health department approval was granted. Um, it was type two action under CEGRA, um, so no further environmental uh, required, although it is an archeological sensitive, and they did submit a report back in 2017 when the application was first reviewed with no uh, findings there. Uh, the installation of the uh, new IA system is required uh, for any construction on lot three and any substantial improvements on lot two. Now, uh, lots one and two, and by the way, that's now standard for throughout the town the health department regulation. So uh, we had the hearing with the 10 day written comment period, no comments were received. Uh, number six talked about the clearing, which is 60% uh, of each lot um, based on the lot sizes. Uh, number seven, uh, the park fee would be paid a flat fee of 2,500. We have two existing residences, uh, so you assess the park fee on the additional lot that's being created. Um, number eight, the map is in substantial agreement with the pre-app report. Uh, number nine and ten are from a different subdivision, so that's a mistake, so those will come out of the resolution. Uh, and then number eleven, which will change uh, to number nine, uh, it's not subject to Long Island Workforce Housing. Uh, town engineer <coughs> is recommending a two-inch drainage here. He normally recommends three, that's why I highlighted it in the uh, resolution, um, whatever the board wants to do. Uh, conservation board made comments, um, noted that the clearing has been accurately depicted on the map, uh, and then the lots uh, are subject to the new IA system, as I just indicated. 
Um, the Office of Fire Prevention uh, came in with their comments. Sorry, the area served by public water and fire hydrants, so there's no other recommendations. Um, and then the historic board indicated that there were no historic resources. Um, we didn't get any other referral comments, and obviously it's received health department approval. Uh, so the resolution is to approve uh, the three lot subdivision plans, the map of um, Joseph Padilla, prepared by Joseph Borilski, dated October 13, 2015, and last revised June 20th, 2022. Uh, subject to the following, the changes to the map, uh, all proposed structures shall be removed. The map title shall uh, be stated as final standard subdivision map of Joseph Padilla. Uh, the clearing calculation shall be updated um, to indicate, it says the maximum in square footage for each lot. That's actually provided on there, I think. Mm -hmm. um, although they showed the existing on there, so we just want to know what the total maximum permitted is based on the lot area, so that, that should go on there. Uh, and the postal delivery um, <coughs> numbers for each lot, payment of the park fee, uh, the covenants and restrictions, the standard, uh, no further subdivision of the lots, no lot line changes uh, without a planning board approval. Um, two of the lots are already served by existing utilities, so no new utility poles for overhead utilities for the new lot. Uh, and again, uh, installation of uh, utilities underground for lot three. And I highlighted here, um, Tom's memo says two inch rainfall, um, but I noticed that we've been getting three inch. Am I right, Claire, that we've been getting three inch? Especially in California. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I just eight wondered inch. if you just should do it as a three inch rainfall. Uh, um, yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, right. I think that would be okay. Right? Mm -hmm. um, we're fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> Else. Oh, and then retention of all storm water um, during and after construction on site. A submission of the draft declaration of covenants restrictions, title certification, mortgage consent is applicable, approval of the legal documents, and then submission of the mylars and paper prints for signature, which have to be filed within 62 days after it's signed by the secretary. Great. Uh, Bruce, did you need to add? Nothing to add. Nothing to add? Okay. Pretty cut and dry. Anything for board members? <laughs> We have a motion for approval. Motion. motion by Craig. Second. Second by uh, Kate. 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 All in favor. <laughs> Aye. Opposed. <laughs> abstention. Six yes. We're in this here. But. Yeah, we are. <coughs> and I definitely want three inches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> and then Luciano, we Luciano. have a. That's a page 25. Yeah. The pre application report. Yeah. All right, let me just get to that. Actually, so this, this, this is the property. It's on Millstone Road. Um, we looked at this. It's got an uh, existing single family residence tennis court, um, two lined ponds. Um, people have been looking at this for a while. This is another one I took over. Uh, there is town owned um, open space that you see here uh, to the north and to the east. And actually, just looking at this aerial from our GIS, here's the property here. You can see the town open space, uh, and you could also see the Pominoff Trail um, is located to the to the south. Where's Old State Harbor? <coughs> oh, no, where's Middle Line? Middle Line is to the south here. Okay. That's, yeah, just south. Of it. So this is north of Middle Line. So here's Middle Line right here. So this is north of Middle Line? Yeah, north of Middle Line. Okay, and there's a sand line. Yep, and there's a sand line. This is the property in question, I think. That's better. <laughs> so you can see there uh, where it lines up with the existing town open space. Um, so we have a pre-app report for this one. Let me just open that up here. Do you, I, I left them a copy for everybody yesterday. Do you have them? Um, yes. Okay, if you don't, I'll, I'll provide one. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so it's a three lot standard plan as I, let's go back and show you. Uh, one lot which would be an oversized lot in the R80 zone. It's also um, uh, effort for protection overlay district and archeological <coughs> sensitive area. So they're showing an oversized lot containing all the, most of the existing improvements. Uh, a vacant lot which would be lot number one uh, over here. And then a second uh, vacant lot over here it has um, some of the existing driveway that serves the existing residents uh, located in there. Uh, but it would, they're proposing a three lot standard plan. Let me go back to the report here. Uh, yep, Aquifer, New York. So it's just over seven acres uh, in the two acre uh, zoning. That's the, aerial, that's the map. 
Uh, they submitted a standard plan, um, and it shows that um, um, everything conforms, so there's no debate about the um, yield. We did note there is, just bear with me, uh, I'll show it here, it's easier. There is an old trusty road that's shown here to the south of the property. <coughs> There's old historic information on record that shows that the trustee road, as you can sort of see, <laughs> sort of mm -hmm. was mapped out and the portion uh, does traverse this property. Um, so you'll see that in my report I, I asked for clarification, either show it on the map if it's still there or provide the necessary title certification to show that it doesn't exist. My the guess map shows the ownership by Schiavone. Yes, that's why, they, it, it, I, that's why I raised the question because Dave, and I, Dave Wilcox and I talked about it because we were looking yeah. at the old historic maps. Uh, still showed as a trusty road, so uh, they'll have to provide whatever information. Um, yeah, you know, uh, but you're right. Back here. Oh, sorry. Ahead of myself. <coughs> and so, um, like I said, it, it shows it, um, and if it needs to go on the map, it would have to come out of yield, but it doesn't look like it would affect uh, the total amount of yield, as, as we obviously have an oversized parcel in there. Uh, they didn't um, submit a plan, development plan. We had discussed this, or you and Matt had discussed this at the time. Um, and so while it looks like this is a hard map to get um, 50, you need a minimum of 50% open space here. If you take these two vacant lots, uh, they themselves are, uh, don't equal 50% of the property, uh, and most of the improvements are pretty sprawling here. So um, it's sort of difficult uh, to accomplish that in this case. So I'll. When I get to my recommendations, um, we could take a look. I met with the Trails Advisory, who I think had a very good uh, recommendation here. It's an unlisted action under CEPRA, so this says a short environmental assessment form should be submitted. Um, it, it's got to be a long environmental assessment form. Yeah. Um, and they have to do the archaeological uh, study as well, because it's in the uh, New York sensitive area. Uh, it's a minor review uh, under the town code. It's not subject to the Long Island Workforce Housing Act. Uh, conformance with the comprehensive plan. There's nothing specific about this property. Um, but what I would say the obviously comprehensive plan talks about clustering, open space, trail uh, links, and, and the like. So uh, to the extent that we could incorporate some of those into this map um, to comply with that. Uh, again, we don't have an open space plan, but a minimum of 50% would be needed. And that's needed in order to uh, qualify with the minimum and to get the benefit of the zoning relief that the right. planning board. So you don't provide the minimum, even if the lots become smaller, you have no ability to, to, right. to do that. So, okay. um, so that was one issue. The park requirement um, is assessed. Um, you have one existing residence. Uh, so in this case, it would be assessed on the, um, or be based on the assessment value of the neighborhood, which is currently set at 15,000 and change for each lot. Uh, so the park fee, uh, absent providing a trail easement, would be just over $30,000 for this application. Uh, we had a public hearing in June, and it was followed by a 10-day comment period with no comments. Um, this says here, <laughs> planning boards is a density incentive PRD plan. That's a mistake, um, so I will <coughs> fix that. Uh, I think I, what I would say here is the plan would prefer a, um, either a PRD plan or uh, some other plan, and we'll talk about the trails advisory, that would provide some buffers to the town's open space and provide a trail link. Uh, and I'll show you what, uh, what they came up with. Uh, we did referrals to the various agencies and I've incorporated uh, the comments here. Um, the engineers are uh, recommending uh, a couple things, removal of some encroachments that are in the town's right of way uh, and maybe uh, <coughs> getting a, uh, this is a portion of Millstone Rancho Rosa, so they're trying to be, how do reckon this portion be dedicated to the town? Um, so I put that in the report so the applicant is, is aware that that comes out of uh, Tom's office. They want to have future debate about that, we could do that, but we're just going to make the requirement, you know, conform to the engineer. Um, and of course this is going to be subject to uh, a SWIP um, and then the three inch rainfall and some removal of some um, uh, split rail fence and hedges in the right of way, uh, pretty typical. And then he said we could address this before signing the maps. So nothing major, the conservation board. Uh, came back with comments. Uh, they noted that the, um, the ponds are lined and they're not regulated wetlands. Um, but uh, the DEC came back and said that uh, they do, in fact, regulate the wetlands there. So uh, I'll, we'll go through that as well. Um, let's see the ponds are regulated. So, yes, they note that they are regulated by the DEC. Um, this talks about open space to the north and east, uh, given um, the town land there. So we will we'll go there. 
Uh, they talk about the slope easements. There are some excessive slopes in here. They don't come out of yield when the lots are over 80,000 square feet. Uh, but perhaps as part of the um, some buffering and uh, trail easement, we could we yeah. can incorporate that. Um, the limits of clearing need to be properly shown um, and indicated. The, first, the lot there where it shows the existing improvements has historically been cleared since the 60s and 70s on those aerials. But what we normally do is if you're entitled to any pre-existing clearing before you come over your final, we would say go to the chief building inspector and get a pre-existing determination. So mm -hmm. that way the final map would have the you know, uh, accurate numbers on there. Um, and if it's over clear, then, then it would be addressed. Um, they, uh, they talk about a common driveway plan for the two lots, but we're going to talk about that as well. Um, innovate, the IA systems are required now, so um, that will go on the map. <coughs> And then there's the long-eared bat uh, within uh, currents within 1.5 miles um, from the Conservation Board. Department of Public Safety noted that there's uh, water mains and fire hydrants. Um, the New York State DEC did come back and say they do regulate the wetlands there. The subdivision of land is not a regulated activity, um, so they're not going to approve the subdivision map, so uh, let me say that. But construction activities, as they say in there, a common driveway, um, any of that stuff would be subject to a uh, wetlands permit. So, um, so it's noted, and of course they noted um, the, the long-eared bat situation, and of course there'll be clearing limitations and windows that they're allowed to clear um, as part of that. Um, that's the DC Trails Advisory Board. So let me just pull this out real quick. What the Trails Advisory Board, I, I actually was at the meeting. I, I, I met with them. Um, given the existing improvements, okay, what, what, what they're recommending <coughs> is sort of because you have a, a you know, tennis court here, absent removing structures, so we're trying to work within you know, the existing. Uh, they were recommending like a 25 foot buffer along here. And then a 25 foot buffer along the rest of it, because that's all adjacent to the town's open space. And then some type of 100 foot wide um, uh, open space buffer that comes down to Mill Road. Their point is to have the open space connection from Mill Road to the town open space, which then could ultimately connect to the Pomona Trail. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, it's just what they're looking for is a new trailhead um, location. Um, I can almost see a larger, I, I mean, I'm looking at the topo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to try and get a larger buffer on that lot one, to try to capture a lot of those slopes, yeah, and maybe a smaller one. No, no, on this line here, right? Yeah. In other words, he's saying make a, a larger, larger buffer up there because that's where the slopes are, and then something narrower here. Do you have to see the topo, George? Yes. Yeah. Try and catch catch some of that topo. I don't have it for me, but the map that I drew up actually had about a hundred foot buffer up here. Yeah. And probably fifty on the side or something. I, I mean, I, I think you'd always go narrower, you know, 20 foot 25 on the okay. side, and with a larger one in the back. I don't know. But yeah, I, I think you're right. Again, the key here was that the, mostly from the Trails Advisory Board perspective is yeah, they just after doing a cluster, it lets lets us get some type of connection so that yeah. we could get from Millstone, right. and, and I think that's a good idea. So, I'll I'll revise the report to to uh, sort of maybe we'll just do a consistent 25 around, and then we'll increase it here. Now, um, do they? How does public get, get access to that strip? Though? Well, they would ha that's that's part of the report. You'll see that I say oh, in there, uh, trail easements um, trail in favor or of the dedication as part of their park fee. Yes, I think we leave those options open. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if you go to the comments to recommend, the first highlighted one was what we just discussed. So in the alternative of doing a cluster plan, I think we could do a plan with easements. Uh, as we were right. talking about that, that you know, uh, or open space that would provide um, the access. Um, so then, then number two, uh, as we always recommend, we can't require it, um, but um, town's got some money to spend, so it is adjacent to town uh, open space. Uh, I always recommend that they go talk to our good friend Jackie Fenlon and see if there's any opportunities for preservation. You never know. Right. Um, yeah. Well, it worked with Camp Jerome, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. And uh, that whole thing is being preserved now, so um, so they could do that. I'd say compliance with the uh, the, the town engineer. Um, if anybody wants to argue about recommendations to expanding, you know, road or providing easements, they could do so um, at a later date. But we normally just incorporate the now they're going to use a historical access for both lots. Uh, well, yeah, we're going to get to that oh, also. Okay. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I also say on the road frontage there, we could provide a 25-foot naturally vegetated buffer along the road frontage for all three lots. Um, 
because yeah. it is wooded up there and it's nice yeah. so I, I would do that um, number five talks about the uh, clearing uh, again go to the chief building inspector get your pre-existing determin uh, determination uh, whatever the numbers are they are and then if we need to revegetate we, we, we do it as part of the final um, that they would have to revegetate um, Number six talks about the 15% slope. So as we know, we don't exclude them from yield, but we could incorporate them in an easement that'll protect them, so that's good. Um, number seven talks about uh, uh, the wetlands requirement from the DEC, so they will have to go um, to get permits for any construction. Uh, eight talks about the long-eared um, bat requirement, so that'll be incorporated into um, the property. Now, let's talk about this driveway real quick, because it's sort of, I've already told the applicant, there's, you know, the planning board's not going to allow an access <coughs> on this bend here. Uh, that just seems dangerous um, at this stage of the game. There is a, a, a driveway here, and it could serve, obviously, lot two um, and three. Um, it's not easy to accomplish, you know, but I think that the access for lot one back here should still come off off the existing common driveway mm. and across. I just don't see putting it over here as being... Yeah. Uh, Good. Dangerous curve. It's a dangerous yeah, curve. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Anthony, because that has been a concern I had, and you know, previously, you know, working for the town, um, we, there is a regulation that I think at subdivision roads, they're required to have adequate line of sight in yeah. the town code. Now that's not defined, and one day I'd like to maybe work with everybody in the town board to define that. Um, common driveways, although they're not officially a road. Uh, I think I'm glad you're sharing that same concern because uh, Millstone and, and some other roads uh, are, you know, are yeah. an issue. No question about it. You know, then the question is, you know, depending on where it's located in here, does it require additional clearing? Um, it may. Um, and, and so we'll, we could deal with that at the time. Um, uh, you know, but uh, I just think that we should just do a common driveway. Um, yeah. It just makes more sense. And back. then the new trailhead access would have parking elsewhere, or how, how would that work? Oh, you mean for the trail itself? I'm oh, sorry, say that again. Yeah, because the trailhead would come off the millstone. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I mean, we would just provide, there would be nothing there. It would just, okay. it basically provide the open space area that the, 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 the trail okay. advisory board decides to blaze through or provide another <coughs> access. It would just simply for foot traffic to come up uh, okay. millstone. They would just, you just park along the side of the road. Park right. yeah. the side of Sometimes the road. they started another trail, and this is just a continuation. They cross the road. You yeah. Know? That's right. Um, so it, it, was a, it was a pretty solid recommendation, I think. Um, so that was the driveway recommendation. Additional clearing, I just noted, I wanted to mention uh, that it may require additional clearing. You have that ability. If, if we, you know, in some give and take with an applicant, if, if, if we got to put in the driveway to have a safer, we might have to look at revegetation somewhere else, you know. So I just wanted to leave that open. Uh, this is an unlisted action. Um, they got to submit the long EAF form as well as a New York's, as well as an archaeological report. Uh, and then Number 11, and, and Glorian has mentioned this many, many times, because uh, we have kept mentioning our overlay district, uh, effective July 1st, 2021, IA systems are required, period. We don't have to do any of that. Uh, and they need health department approval uh, to proceed with the final. Where's the park fee? How do we, uh, is it going to be the park? The park fee is, uh, is 15000 and change per lot, or, and I'll put, I can put this in here. Yeah. Um, in the alternative, a dedication of a trail uh, easement, easement to the town uh, could satisfy the park, and that easement would be larger than what the minimum uh, park area would be. So that, that yeah, would be okay. I mean, if they did the dedication with that lot one still meet zoning size. If they want to, to. Uh, That's something we got to look at, Dennis. Um, is that right? I, I my my copy is too yeah, small. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, it, you um, know, it's. I think that you know. It's a recommendation. Um, <laughs> applicants going to go back to their design professionals. <laughs> Here's what the town came up with, uh, yeah. but there could be an issue. Uh, a lot of times they just they, they want they'll dedicate that strip because they don't want the liability. That's and that's what the recommendation will. As long as we can create that lot that's large enough. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Maybe they could adjust some of the lots, you know, okay. uh, in the middle there. Yeah, um, but yeah, that, that's that's accurate. So the language in the park view will be dedication or easement. Yeah. In lieu of uh, payment. Um, payment. Yep. Yeah. And that would be the recommendation um, because uh, we prefer that actually. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, a pre it's pre application, right? Yep. Okay, then do we have a motion to adopt the report? Motion. A motion by George. Second. Second by Gloria. All in favor, aye. Opposed, abstentions. Aye. Yes. Mm -hmm.
And then I have the next one, and I didn't do a resolution on this, I'm sorry. Um, this is actually just um, setting the uh, performance uh, bond estimate for uh, Lewis Road PRD. We got the uh, engineer gave us the performance bond estimate. Um, <laughs> Should we ask the number? <laughs> yes, I'll tell you. The performance, well, it's, it's the third uh, <coughs> cost, so. No? That's the whole amount, not one third. Yeah, it's performance, the whole amount. The maintenance oh, yeah, bond yeah, yeah, would yeah, be yeah, one yeah, third. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry so I was just going to make sure you got the how many zero? How many zeros are we looking at? <laughs> the. Spaghetti twelve million six. The total cost of improvements is twelve million six hundred and eighty-nine thousand nine hundred and eighty-seven dollars. Correct. The performance bond you said is, is is represented as a third of that. No, no. Performance bond is the full. Oh, the, amount. it's the full amount, and a third of the original. Oh, I gotcha, gotcha. Would gotcha. be the yeah. maintenance, maintenance bond amount. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why they didn't say that in here. Nice try, though, Anthony. <laughs> hmm. They actually didn't say that. No, they put that on the bond estimate. I think that is ultimately that for the maintenance, setting the maintenance bond amount at a later date. Right. Gotcha. You know, I did this at the last minute, Wayne. Um, no, can I, I put this on next time and confirm the numbers? I, I just don't, I. No, that is the number, though. And uh, you have the bond estimate? I do. Okay. They performed, they have the fee amount at $855,000. $345.53. Yeah, and that's representative seven and a half of the twelve million. Yeah. And then the total cost of the improvements, it says twelve million six hundred and eighty-nine thousand nine hundred and eighty-seven dollars. And then it says in parentheses, one third of the original performance bond amount is four million two hundred and twenty-nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-six dollars. Yeah, and that one third is only for the future purpose of setting your maintenance bond amount. Gotcha. So it's twelve million six hundred and eighty-nine thousand nine hundred and eighty-seven dollars. Correct. That's the number that I have to put in the resolution. Exactly. So I have to correct my, my statement here. The, the review fee is set at $855,345.53. The um, performance bond cost estimate is $12,689,987. Nancy, do you think they're going to do it in-house or are they going to farm it out to <coughs> I thought we had engineering? Um, my guess is that it's going to be both. A lot of work. Yeah. My understanding is it's going to be a higher. Uh, yeah, I think when Tom was there for us. He, he yeah. indicated, yeah, they yeah. they're going to retain it. Uh, What's yeah. with oversight from Tom's staff? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So just to get that number correct again, on the record, $12,689,987. Great. Do we have a motion? Is it news day today? Motion. Motion by Craig. Second performance bond. Sure. Second by George. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Success. Is that the main performance line? <laughs> Got me going. Salary? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I do it for the fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, it's clear. Do you have anything else, Anthony? Do you think clear is not clear? Hold on. Real quick. Well, I'll go in order. Uh, number 12, High Dunes Condominium. Okay. This is easy enough. It's just two. This is in West Hampton um, on Dune Road. Uh, here's the aerial up here. There's a whole bunch of strange condos up and down this stretch. Um, this is uh, High Dunes Condominiums. Uh, it's basically one building here, as you can see, with multiple units. They submitted a pre-submission conference, and it's really hard to see on, on the maps, but uh, they're going to be residing, um, doing some new windows with the existing building, uh, redoing the decks in the front, and then redoing and expanding uh, the decks in the back um, as part of this whole thing. So it's a pre-submission conference. They did submit plans. It's sort of hard to read, but... You know, for each, each of the units, showing what they're doing. And they also submitted elevations. Uh, looks like it's going to be some type of hardy plank uh, material. Uh, but it's a pre-submission conference. It's on the ocean. You know, they, 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 I know they're dealing with the coastal uh, erosion yeah. stuff as well. Yeah. So, because the last thing we want to have <coughs> is another debacle on an application where we approve it as a site plan and they go to get a building permit and the department says you need to lift the whole thing. So yeah. um, we'll, 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 we'll address that as part of the pre-submission. Um, so I would recommend submitting the pre-submission conference for um, February 9th. February 9th, we have yeah. a motion. 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 motion
Okay, motion by Gloria and second by George. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? And Anthony, Six, yes. there are seven um, public hearings scheduled based on the data in, for two, not for February. I have, um, February I have February. one more. So what's the second meeting in February? The, it's, it's what day? 23rd? Yeah, I mean, that seems like a very heavy. Are you okay with the 23rd? Yeah, okay. We could do, can we, can we set it for, reset it then for February 20th? Okay, we're re, uh, retracting, we're amending the motion to change from February 9th to February 23rd. Do we have a motion? Which one? High Dunes. High Dunes Company. High Dunes. Motion by George. Second. Second by Gloria. And all in favor, aye. aye. Opposed abstentions? Six yes <coughs> for the 23rd. Good catch, yeah. Gloria. <laughs> well, I was making notes, and that's, I'm writing February 9th down yep. and down and down. It's like At least somebody just keep me track. <laughs> um, well, Charles, Jackie, Jackie um, normally would do that. Is right. Daphne Vaughn on uh, Zoom? Daphne? Is that Rothman? Number 17 is Rothman. Oh, There's 17. No one okay. on um, I'll make this simple because it was um, Rothman Dynasty here. This was one. This was Jackie's. That's with um, all those wetlands. Here, with right? all those wetlands. Yeah. You might recall there's a covenant invo uh, amendment involved to allow for the two lot subdivision. Right. Planning board sort of put off, consider they had the hearings, but they sort of put off dealing with it because you wanted to see, again, this was Jackie's, to make sure that the applicant came in. Um, my understanding is with a cluster or a, uh, an open space plan, plan, which they did. You know, with the two lots in the front and then all the open space in the back. Yeah. Um, we're deeming the application incomplete uh, because the pre-app was incorrect. It stated that it was an unlisted action, but this is actually in the Ag Overlay District. Oh. So it's a type one action. Yeah. So I've already advised uh, Daphne uh, that she's got to submit the long EAF form um, for, for that. Uh, also, um, wetlands permit application. Um, they have to submit that in the fee. Uh, since you're the wetlands board in this case, you would be issuing the, the three-year wetlands permits for the properties. So until we get that, we would deem the application incomplete. Complete, very good. Do we have a motion? Motion. Oh. Motion given by Craig, second by Gloria. All in favor? Aye. 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 Extensions? We have six yes. Uh, also another Jackie's, uh, Chicken Briar Hill. Remember this one? Oh, yeah. Um, we came in with the final application. This was one, um, let's see here. Okay, this is the one that's in Eastport. It's the R20 zoning district. They're looking to do a four lot plan. This is on North Bay Avenue. Got some town open space. Uh, my reading of everything was there was obviously some drainage concerns that come down the middle of this, I believe, if I remember correctly. Because they came with a four lot plan and the plan board wanted a cluster open space plan uh, uh, to, uh, you know. Here's that. Yeah, they just walked in. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we went through your stuff already. Are you? <laughs> yes. We'll go out there and talk to one of them. <laughs> um, so this is the plan. That, does this look familiar to the board at all? Yeah. There was, you know, because there's a. This was the one where they were going to make some sort the of drainage sway. underneath right. the driveway. That I don't remember, or, to be quite honest. Yeah, because there was like agricultural land and there was drainage coming off the There is, there's drainage underneath. coming off it. So, you know, looking at the plan that the plan <coughs> looked at, it was requested that they incorporate the open space area through the center of the property to include what it said in there was this uh, this sluice way. Um, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, if you look at the overhead, I think, and they were saying that it's a common driveway and there was there's some a kind of There's going like, to be a common driveway here. Yep. And they were putting some kind of drainage pipes underneath that common driveway, right? I totally don't remember this at all. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm shaking the, the haze off as well. I, I remember Chicken yeah. Briar because it's an odd sounding <coughs> application, but I don't remember yeah. the details at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jackie took this over. So, you know. So that's Bay and, Bay and what? What's running to the south? North Bay. This is East Pond. East Pond. East Pond. That was, it's hard to see. But the, you know, the, the, it was come basically my reading of the pre-app was that it was, see, the, the, you have the town open space down here. Right. So my understanding was, um, is that the drainage is, you know, is coming down, the sluice way goes through here, um, and you wanted to sort of link up what was existing open space and to capture, I guess, the issue of the, the drainage area of this property. Um, that just, I, 
some of the board members don't remember it, I guess. <laughs> um, nevertheless, they came in with, you know, the application materials, health department approval. Um, and so I was just going to recommend deeming it complete so I could do my referrals to engineer because I want the engineer to really look at this. Yeah. Uh, and I was going to recommend uh, <coughs> the hearing um, for February 23rd. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's the second one we're that. <coughs> we only have five. Months. So I would recommend deeming it complete and scheduling the hearing. Scheduling. Yeah, yeah, February 23rd, we have a motion. Motion. Motion by Craig, second by Kate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstention? Six yes. And what else you got? I'll just do um, real quick. Uh, number 20 uh, is an extension um, for the submission of the final maps, another project that took over. Um, it was a, uh, a lot line modification. So we're extending this. What? I'm sorry. What's the name? What's the Paris, name? Paris, oh, pa Paris, Paris, Paris Project okay. Management LLC and P R I Z. Yeah. Not to be included with Paris. That's right. Paris. <laughs> it's a little retroactive because I took this over. Uh, so I'm recommending that we do an extension for submission of the final maps. It's actually from September 18th, 2022 until March 17th, 2023. Very good. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Glorian. Second. Second by George. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six yes. And how about Firestar? That's uh, just waiting for the final stuff. Uh, Wayne gave me a letter today. We're just going to do an extension um, from uh, January 10th, 2023 until April 10th, 2023. Good. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Gloria. Second. Second by Kate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those abstentions? Six yes. The only other one I have, he's not here. Um, it is Joe Goss is on number 26. He, so was, he, he was here. He was here. He, he left with Claire. He left the <laughs> 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 Suspicious. Yeah. Wayne's going, he's out here. <laughs> okay. You're good. The hearing's on the 23rd. I know, I can't, I was watching it, I couldn't get on Zoom. Oh. Like, can you make it the, I can't do the 23rd. So okay, which know. application was this again? Chicken Briar. Chicken Briar, okay. I tried to get What's on our here? first one in March? Uh, My 9th, the 9th, March. March 9th? No, How's yeah. March 9th? Okay. okay, so our action then is to amend the uh, public hearing for Chicken Briar from February 23rd to March 9th. We have a motion. Motion. Motion by Glorian. Second. Second by George. All in okay. favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstention? Six yes. And. All right. I've been putting poor Joe off since July. <laughs> <laughs> That's called fast track. <laughs> and he's been made it's fast track. It's only uh, January. <laughs> so. This is a situation, this is um, Ocean View Park Map 105, Section 1. It's 467 Great Hill Road uh, in North Sea. Um, let me show you the aerial. It is a... What number are you in? 26. Oh, 26. 26, I'm sorry, Thank you. Kate. That's my aerial. That's my aerial. Oh. Little out parcel in the middle. These are all skewed. Uh, this is a development section that the planning board uh, opened up. Um, and basically, uh, we got an application to build on the property. Uh, the property is in the CR 200 zoning district. Uh, so Joe was bringing in a whole bunch of development rights. If you saw from that, uh, a list that long. A list that long. Uh, the gist of it is this: um, under the town code, the, typically you want it from the same school district. That's the way it works. The town code does allow you to consider 50, up to 50 percent outside of the school district, uh, which is wh what Joe was doing. Um, am I right, Joe? So far, I got this right. Yes. Great. That's great. <laughs> um, and so basically, that very lengthy resolution, and it is, and I thank Joe for sitting down with me, uh, going through each and every one of his certificates. I have them. Um, to help me come up with this, using Jackie. Jackie Fennell did an excellent job yeah. of this back I was going to say, this, is, this was with Jackie, where she'd have to be adding up all those. Yeah, fractional <laughs> development. Fractional development rights. And I've talked to Dave about this. So basically, you'll see in the resolution that we broke down each whereas as, as the development right, where it's coming from, the amount of uh, development right it's equal to, and the square footage. Um, all the numbers uh, add up. Um, you're more than welcome to take your calculator. Um, <laughs> but I've done it many, many times over. So I, I'm basically recommending uh, approval of the request to build on this property, 467 Great Hill Road, um, subject to um, uh, well, you can see it here, um, to the transfer of all the development rights and the um, redemption of all the certificates, filing of same, um, and you know to be executed by the planning board. Um, beyond that, I don't think there's much to do with this. Yeah, 
Both on property. Storage, electric, public water. Everything's there. It's all, all there. And you all approved it. So um, to go. we'll take all those little development rights. Joe will give all the originals to me. We'll get them signed. Oh, no, don't give them to me now. <laughs> and we'll, um, and, and we'll. If I need to sign, I'll, I'm here. I can sign. Okay. Oh, I'm going to go through that. I'll do it after. The, yeah. I'll, I'll make sure. But if you want to approve the resolution? <laughs> you can. Very good. Do we have a motion? Good. Motion. Motion by Craig. Second. second by George. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We have six yes and one absent. And you have something else? Oh, that's Claire has another one. Yeah, just uh, I have my maps. Cordes family and Sean Dunbar signed. Oh, okay. With the, we're, uh, we're acknowledging item 28 for signature and 29, and 29 mm -hmm. for Sean Dunn. Um, hang on Lauren, have you signed anything I else? I signed Cordes and I signed Southampton Farm Supply. Sean Dunn is there, and I don't know where it's supposed to be signed. Oh, okay. Okay. It's hard to say. Item it's 30 is acknowledged <laughs> on the record. You haven't signed Paul Sinelli then, right? I, we, it's not there. It's not there. Okay. Good. Then we'll acknowledge it. Jeff, welcome. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Yeah, nice where are you taking us to? Oh, my God. Are you going in order, uh, Jeff? Or? I don't believe I'm next. Let's see. 22. Uh, the first one. 22 is the first one? Actually, no, 16. Oh, 14. 14. Yeah, but that's further down. 13. 13? I didn't do anything yet. Oh, it's all. Yeah. I think a state of battle. Are you going back in order then? Oh, Jeff's here. Jeff's here? Okay, Jeff. Take us somewhere. All right, anywhere. so we'll start with number 14. I'll knock out uh, all the site disturbances. Okay. There are two of them that didn't make the packet. So if you notice the uh, discrepancy there, I have them here. Okay. So let's open them up for you. Actually, this is 14 is subdivision. Yeah, so we'll start with subdivision then. So we received a uh, three-lot subdivision application, uh, pre-application. Uh, the applicant's representative, Carl Benacasa, oh, grab him for Jeff, us. Jeff, could, could you just tell me the name of the application? Yes, Wilderness Trail. Okay, because I've got 14. notes without numbers. Gotcha. So, all right, proposed three-lot subdivision. Uh, so 392,000. Actually, a larger, a, a larger subdivision. Subdivision is proposed with a road reverter, uh, which would provide access. Oh, let me open this up for you. My note says this was a landlocked parcel. Yes, it is currently a landlocked parcel. Uh, the adjoining subdivision has a road reverter for future road opening. <coughs> let me flip this over for you. So yes, it is a landlocked parcel, but right here the subdivision titled Salt Wood, Salt Weed, uh, had provisions in uh, their covenants and restrictions for future road opening. Uh, it's a 50, 50, wide, 50 foot wide common driveway, I believe. No, so it's a road. It's a road. Um, if you look at the area, There we go. So this is a subdivision map, and I have to flip it for you. There you go. I think you can, you can view it better this way. One more time. You get the gist. Perfect. There we go. I can take this one. Sure. Go ahead, George. Huh? Do you want me to come up? Or? Sure. Okay, so sure, Carl. So if you see here, the 
the subdivision back in 1983, uh, lands of Frank Bayers Jr. Mm -hmm. established this row reverter. Uh, the applicant uh, would like to use this and open this up as well, a row. So in other words, frontage. now it's it's common driveway. It's dog legs, basically. And, and then we're good, so it's going to turn into a. But you have a reverter on them. If you look at the yeah, the area will show it's one essentially it's one common driveway that connects them, <coughs> and it ends at about. Um, See where that sort of cul-de-sac, that... Yeah. That's mm -hmm. where it ends today. So we would be extending over those parcel three and parcel two on that subdivision map, the remainder of the road, which by right benefits the properties to the west. Right. Uh, on oh, there's the area. Yeah, there, there it is. Okay. So there's a recorded declaration. Oh, sorry, Which, uh, what's, that, what's that road leading in? So that's Wilderness, Wilderness Trail. Wilderness. Okay, thank you. So Wilderness Trail leads into these, and it basically, the terminus of, of Wilderness Trail is, is questionable, but it technically it terminates at the beginning of that four lot subdivision that you're looking at right there. Yeah. And then from there, there's a, what exists now is essentially a common driveway that connects, uh, off of which connect the four lots. Um, we would be expanding that common driveway pursuant to the road reverter that was recorded against the property to benefit this property to the west, the subject property. Um, the and neighbor, the parcel, I think it's parcel two if I remember correctly, but the top left parcel right here. is yes. actually fully aware of this and has um, entered it into agreement with the owner of the large, the subject parcel for an additional 60 feet easement. Uh, over his property to provide access. Though I don't know that that's entirely necessary given the road revert. And what what road is accessing? <coughs> Wilderness Trail. It's Wilderness Trail. Which is a private road. Which is a private road. It's a private road, yes. Mm -hmm. Just where? See right there? You want to the show, can is? you just, Maybe. where the green is? If you yeah. go down. So just zoom out a little, Jeff, so you can see how they get access from um, what's, the, what's the feeder road? road? Yeah. Oh, it's Watermill Town. Is that big horse road on the right? Uh, as you're heading north, is a big horse farm. Okay. Across the, this is across the street from that horse farm. Okay. I just. And right now it ends, and then there's a series of dog legs, which is what I'm, is what I'm hearing that that we have a reverter that could be turned into a road. Correct. Yes. The uh, feeder road is Stephen Seven Ponds Town. Okay. The feeder road. Yeah. Seven. And the big issue in that neck of the woods, Carl, is public water. Uh, do you have public water in the wilderness? I don't believe we do, so we'd have to do it. would be well. Wells. What'd you say? It would be Wells. It would be Wells, yeah. yeah. It would be Wells. Is the health department approving Wells? Uh, I've seen them approve for small, minor subdivisions, Wells. Because we had a three-lot map on Great Hill Road mm -hmm. where they had to bring public water all the way up from Major's Path up the hill. I think there was another application off yeah. of Watermill Town Watermill that, Town, that, that didn't A little further happen. north of you, is, and they didn't have it. And so, and then the other big issue you run into is uh, fire protection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fire district now wants, so <coughs> have you st looked at the health department? Yeah, we have begun to look at that, and that's certainly part okay. of our consideration. So that could be an issue. Those surrounding homes are not on city water? No, they're no. on wells. That's one of the frustrating aspects of this area. Mm. Now, they are doing main extensions in the area probably be best to touch base with the water authority. This is very See where recent. their closest one is. Yeah. I mean, this is very recent. Within the last couple of months, I've become aware of some water main extensions <coughs> in the area. They might have some plan for your area. Mm -hmm. I know River Circle Farm, just south of you, had they brought water into that, for those, uh, those lots. So. Because the fire department is going to want uh, yeah. a, a fire hydrant. So, so the other issue that yeah. we're discussing is if, if we to do a three lot subdivision, uh, we have a uh, lot with issues, even with with um, uh, flagpoles, with flag lots. <clears throat> so we have a one proposal, that I don't know if you want to put it up, is to have the, uh, there's a two lot, that's the two lot plan, right. and that's fine. One would be to have an easement. 
you can either have two uh, flag poles with reduced width. Obviously, we would need a variance for that. Sure. Or this easement, which um, you know we'll talk about with council as to how best to um, effectuate that easement and whether or not the additional uh, square footage we're getting from the neighbor by virtue of the promised easement could accommodate the frontage required. What's the zoning there? Is it um, the lot sizes would conform to CR 200, but we do run into the issue with frontage. Yeah, that yeah the the lot size conforms. It's just the lot yeah the, the yeah frontage. you have to go to the ZBA. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of routine. There's no open space opportunities there, right? Uh, unfortunately, um, open space would throw them, would make the lots non-conforming. If we were well, if you, I'm thinking the cluster it. plan, but there's no open space around there, is there? No. Uh, uh, to, to the west is a uh, private uh, pro property. <coughs> okay. How does that parcel to the west get access, I should have looked? They all get this, like, this spider web network of... of uh, private roads and flat Drive roads. Wise. Yeah. Yeah. That parcel to the west, is it developed or? Yeah, it's developed here and extends extends all the way down here. Okay, so they have access, where do they have access, off grade hill? I believe it's off grade hill, yeah. Okay. Most of these are long flag lots mm -hmm. extend all the way to grade hill. Okay, so there's, we, we don't have to worry about any access issue. There's no open space connections, so we can go with standard plan, full size lots. Um, and this is going on to pre, for pre application. Correct. Okay. So we propose. Do we have a date of February, February 23rd? February 3rd, let's see. That's I know that is President's Week, so a lot of people are going to be away. I think we have February 9th. Yeah, but we yeah, we got, we're loaded on the 9th. Yeah. We'd rather go with the 23rd. Okay. Yeah. Although we'll probably load up the 23rd. Uh, no, we're not that bad. No? I'm, okay. I'm keeping track. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. Very good, Lori. Okay, so, so Carl, is the 23rd good for you? Right there's fine. Great. Do we have a motion to decrease the application for hearing and set the application for yeah, so the, the hearing for uh, the 23rd? Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Glorian. Second by Tom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We have five yes and two absent. <coughs> All right. Let's talk to the Water Authority and the Health Department, Carl, in the meantime. I will. If you can. So that you haven't seen this with Wells because we have. I don't know if they help. I know in Great Hill they weren't approved. I well. have seen them. Okay. Because I've seen other ones. But, all right. I'll, I will certainly talk to them right away. Individual lots they have. Yeah. Because, but on subdivisions. For minor subdivisions. Though. I mean, yeah, feasibility. It's a three lot map, and I'm surprised. It was an extensive yeah. water main right up, you know, hundreds of thousands like of dollars. Yeah, they wanted like a thousand foot water main. Yeah. All right. So a thousand feet? Okay. It's expensive. All right. I will certainly vet that with that, you. That, that, that. Puts a bit, big wrinkle. Yeah. 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 Yes. People wrinkle. just wait. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, George. All thanks, right. Carl. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks. Great, Jeff. So we'll continue. Uh, number 15, which is 14 flying points. Uh, this one is a proposed two lot subdivision. Um, this one was, this application actually was for before the Landmarks Historic Review Board. Uh, there was a historic uh, structure there, the Diamond House. Diamond oh, the Diamond House, House. Yeah. yeah. That's co the cover of the Southampton Press. Too. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, it did. Um, and they are proposed to move this to lot one. We did an advisory report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now they're moving the house or they're? They've already moved the house. They moved yes. the house. Yeah. The work, uh, they've actually been granted uh, building permits to relocate the structure and also to build uh, a new house on the larger piece, parcel two. Okay. Um, Without the lot being created yet? No. They're, they're, already, they're almost done. 
uh, yeah. dependent on the planning board's comments and oh, okay. But right now it's one parcel, correct? Right now it's one parcel, but it's under construction both. <coughs> both How did they get a permit for second house? How did they get a health department permit for the second house? <laughs> I mean, not not that, sure. You know, <laughs> amazing how things work. It's okay. magic. <laughs> magic. But yeah, the uh, it was an extensive review on the house itself, uh, and I believe in conjunction with the Landmarks Historic Review Board, also with uh, a ton of ZBA approvals, they received. Uh, if you want me, I can go through the approvals. I know uh, we did an advisory report for them. You know, we were supportive of the. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. So Saving the house, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we're here to see essentially uh, deem it complete uh, and to set a uh, public hearing date. Is it pre-submission or public? Yeah. It's pre-submission, right? A uh, pre-application. Pre-application. Okay. For the 23rd? For the 23rd, the 23rd right. as well. Do we have a motion? Motion. Uh, Kate is on the motion. We have a second. George second. on the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstention? Six yes. Yeah, Tom seconding over here too. So. 16 is Van Tassel. <laughs> Van Tassel is a proposed two lot subdivision mm -hmm. in West Hampton. Make sure I have that pocket for you. Okay. Yeah, then your pocket. Okay. We've got two for the 23rd and one. Uh, the and lots are undersized. This is uh, located in the R40 zone. Uh, the proposed lots are 30,274, and uh, lot two proposed at 29,757. Uh, there are no open space uh, opportunities here either, as the surrounding area is pretty uh, well developed. Mm -hmm. The applicant is represented by uh, James Hume. We did review the uh, standard plan. Uh, we deem it complete. Uh, but if Jim has any other comments, um, but the application does require zoning board approval for lot area. Uh, that's correct. So uh, Thank we you. just identify for for the applicant, uh, James N. Hume from Kelly and Hume PC, three two three Mill Road, West Hampton Beach. Good afternoon. Good, Good to see you all. Um, I adopt everything that Jeff just indicated, and only the only further comment that I would have is we have applied for the uh, to the zoning board, but we have not yet had it reviewed or scheduled. Uh, but it uh, that does need the relief, obviously, for area. For area, yeah, yeah. Uh, lot area. Substandard. How how much are you? Sure? Uh, it's an R40 zone, and uh, we're proposing lots of uh, approximately 30. So. 30,000 yeah. So they're about 30,000 each. Yeah. So three quarters. 25%. Yes. Yep. But then we think we can make a good case to the zoning board. Yeah. Is there pre existing lot lines or what's. Uh, no, they're basically they're, there's a quasi residential, second residential use oh, on the is, property, okay. and um, also the, the neighborhood is um, very much smaller sizes. You can see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the character of the neighborhood. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, but we're still waiting to, we, we filed that at the same time we filed here, but um, we're still waiting to hear from them. So we're going to do this as pre-application, Jeff? Correct. And you th think the 23rd, how we are we can doing? Do the do we can do the 9th. We're, we're fine now with the, with the what, what happened to the 9th? We've got, we, we based knocked on, a couple off. Ba we, we've knocked a few Actually, I'll be traveling on the 9th, so. There you go. I can take the 23rd. other one on the 9th. <laughs> now you tell us. <laughs> okay. I can take the 23rd. That we'll take the 23rd. No, we have, we have. Three on the 23rd. Okay. So that's fine. So we're proposing the 9th? The, the no, 23rd. 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 Is that in okay. the afternoon or the evening? evening. That's in the evening at 6 p.m. Okay. And the motion by Gloria? Motion. Second. Second by Craig. All in favor, aye. 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 Extension 6 Yes. Thank you all. Thanks, Thanks you all. Happy New well. Year. Happy New Year. Year. Well. Thank you. And Jeff, you have this. I have another one that was kind of misplaced on this position in the new form. This is number 19. Four and six oak. This is a, a interesting one. This uh, lot uh, was established. These two lots, actually, four and six, 
Uh, they're located right off of uh, Noyak Road uh, in Noyak. Uh, there are uh, lots, essentially there are single separate lots that were established back in 1948. Uh, <coughs> so they predate zoning, uh, but they were held in the same name uh, when they received their um, pre-existing CO. Uh, and has been in the same name since. So they want to reestablish single and separate via subdivision. Now, lot number six, or 46 Oak, um, has an existing garage structure on it. And the main dwelling uh, is at uh, 4 Oak Drive. Uh, they'll need variances for, as you can imagine, lot area. Um, and obviously, to reestablish single and separate, uh, they're going to have to either relocate the garage uh, or demolish it. Yeah. Uh, the lot itself, they're proposing it at 5,218. Uh, there are some other lots in the area that are around 6,000 square feet in size. This would, uh, unfortunately, be the smallest of them. Uh, and obviously, the uh, Fort Oak Drive lot uh, tax lot 31 would be 8,696 square feet. <coughs> yeah, mm -hmm. then, I mean, that's, the, the ZBA, the whole nine yards. Yeah, so they do have to present to the ZBA. Uh, they don't have an application before the ZBA as of yet. I believe they're going through the same process that the previous applicant um, is going through as well as far as waiting. But so they're, uh, they're keeping the old lot lines, they're not looking to... Correct, it's the same lot lines yeah. as uh, was previously um, uh, provided to them, uh, but of course the garage, uh, <coughs> a proposed house, it's 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 a tight lot. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a tight yeah. lot. Well, what's the zoning that R is it R fifteen? Uh, the zoning actually is I believe R forty. R forty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. The owner owns the the house. Correct. On the left side of the street. Yep. Yeah. They want to build us another single family dwelling on the smaller lot. Um, but realize they need to make the, each yeah. lot single and separate. So we, we get a lot of these. The ZBA does too. You know, hell, they, they merge with you know the zone. You know. Exactly. So, so our our uh, action is to deem it complete and set up for you. Uh, you want to do the twenty third? The ninth. The ninth. Oh, that's right. The ninth. Can I hold the, the ninth for another project? We've. Could she? She's got the other do project. We have room for another ninth. We've got. I, I think we just have two now on the ninth. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. So we can do and three on the on the twenty third, okay. and one on in March. So. Okay. So our action then on item nineteen is to deem it complete and set it for February 9th. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Gloria. Second. Second by Kate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six yes, one absent. So would I go to the ZBA? Like does. It Simultaneously, like, or, or they, they wait until our, our yeah. They usually some people go to the ZBA first. They they typically the ZBA tells them to hold off until we do our pre pre submission. Then that becomes our Z, uh, advisory report to the ZBA. Okay, it almost seems counterintuitive. Was that? It almost seems counterintuitive. It almost feel like they, they should be at the ZBA. First. Well, as part of our report, we say you need ZBA variants to create this. And, yeah. and we sometimes no. opine that we don't agree with the yeah. application. <laughs> we, we never embrace these, but the ZBA, they acknowledge the inherent hardship of lots merged under it's kind of standard practice. Okay. Yeah. Last night there was a, um, a New York State training webinar on, uh, on overview of the planning board. Number role. seven. That's and uh, next Wednesday night is an overview of the zoning board role. Twenty so, uh, page twenty nine. Uh, if you haven't signed up, I watched the oh, yeah. one last night. It's very educational. Yeah. I'm going to watch next week. Would you share that uh, in, our, in our email? Sure, <coughs> sure. Yeah, that'd be I'll, great. I'll forward the link. I was on last night too. Were you on last? Yeah. yeah. So you can come over. We can have popcorn. We can do the whole. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, to that effect, there's there's APA, which you guys are members of. Every right. almost every Friday at one o'clock is planning uh, and they're live and you can ask questions mm -hmm. and they're very informative so every I'll send you every so Friday at one o'clock is there a sign can we get credit uh, yeah credit well I'm, I'm pretty sure you could if you want like a fans credit but they're very topical 
you know, some of them are solar. They talk about everything that we're doing, you know. So they're live at 1 o'clock? Live at 1 o'clock, one o'clock and then you can watch them afterwards. They always put them online, too. Yeah. So if you want me to ask Janice, but I'll send you the link. And you're all members, so you could all sign up. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Are you jumping back? I want to jump back to number seven. Number seven. Uh, that's just an extension. That's page 29. And Madeline Cuomo, mm. yes. the old cave nightclub. The ca yes. <laughs> How far do you go back? <laughs> so the, the pre-submission report was adopted um, on March 25th, 2021, and uh, they're asking for an extension until March 25th, 2023. They're working with the health department, so they just want an extension. The second uh, resolved here would be to um, authorize the abandonment of the underlying map. There's an underlying map on it. And that would typically you would do at the final, but the health department is asking if it happens now. And I don't think you'd have any issues with that. So that's the second result. They haven't got the final on that, huh? No, not no. yet. Oh, no. Okay. Yes. But they, so they need their health department and that's what they're waiting. So our action is extend the pre-app. Extend the pre-app to March 25th. Uh, of this year, and then to uh, authorize the abandonment of the underlying map. Okay, very good. We have a motion. Motion. Motion by Gloria. Second. Second by Kate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> Six yes. And we have Sabonic. Sabonic Golf Club. So we have in this case, um, this is on page 35, uh, 34 is the resolution, which I've started. Um, so this is an addition, um, it's 1,570 square foot addition to the clubhouse, 480 square foot second floor addition, storage addition, and a 1,967 square foot clubhouse balcony addition to the clubhouse existing. So the plans are attached. Um, what I've done in this case is I didn't think there would be some public interest on, um, so I think I'm recommending expedited review, but I've come to the board to ask if you would like to in this case. Um, I did do referrals to the fire marshal, the town engineer, and uh, ARB. They all responded. The town engineer had several uh, conditions on it, but everybody else responded positively to the project. It is a type two action. Um, and so this is your consideration. If you like the project, I would write the details up for probably the next meeting for you, for your consideration. The applicant's representative is here. If you have any questions, um, I say, and this is the clubhouse. Now, I did, was thinking about this and <coughs> golf courses. Uh, Sabonic was authorized through a PDB and is very specific. Um, it did say that it, thought about this in the future. If there was any expansion, it had to be limited to 25% of the footprints of any structure. In this case, the square footage is 35,000 square feet. So what I just described to you is less than, you know, it's probably 5% or of the full. But I'd like that included in the resolution in any case so we have a running tally in case mm -hmm. they come back in the future. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or like Lord. what's remaining. Yeah, exactly. Available. Okay. Yeah. And it's, I mean, you can't see any of the, the buildings from, no. from the no road. It's a very it's tasteful building, and, yeah. you know, you reviewed it in the, initially. No, no residential impact. So I think we're good with exit. I did okay, that. great. Yeah, so so I'll write it up for the next meeting. Next meeting? Yeah, and just have all the specifics. The applicants here. Um, unless you're comfortable now, I can yeah, just I put mean, that right can, in we there. Can, we can move it now if, yeah. if you want. Any, any questions? The applicants here, they're okay. the builders in this case, but they can answer Welcome. Just use the podium if you could. Sure. Identify yourself. Hi, my name is Paul Trafimovich, Spawn Golf Club. Uh, we're just looking to put an addition on the deck on the back, 1,500 square feet. Uh, just, we're not going to add any more occupancy at all on that. You know, all we want to do is just spread out the tables a little more, put a couple of love seats, rocking chairs in the back. And we're going to do two small storage areas. Uh, all together, it's uh, about 475 square feet, just to put the cushions and everything in. It can't be seen from the road. It, uh, when yeah. I went to ARB, I showed we're going to match the building exactly the way it is over there. So that's all we're looking for right now. I think yeah. the sentiment yeah. is to get to moving along with you. We'd like to get done as soon as possible. Yeah. Just yeah. The weather outside is great, and we open up in a couple of months. I that's why. <laughs> if you turn on a dime. That's exactly it. Yet. That's why we're hoping we can get approval on SAP. So, clear. I think we're so comfortable good. moving up. Great. Doing that. Typical okay, so. conditions, the town engineer, you yep. know, affidavit, plans. plans. Yep. yep, signed plans. And the fee. <laughs> Do we have a motion? <laughs> motion by uh, Florian. I'll second. Second by George. All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, aye. abstentions. 
six yes. Good Thank you very much, okay? <laughs> Enjoy the, the weather all Thank night. You. Um, Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> Sunrise at number nine. Yes, I don't. I actually, um, they're not here. Um, I'd like to take my applicants if that's okay. Oh, okay. Um, and then we'll jump back if you don't mind. Okay, order. great. Um, which my applicant would be Mr. Gaza right here. That is number 27. 27. And I don't have much in the packet, um, but I do have his letter. Um, I'm going to go do an overview here, and then Mr. Gaza can fill in here a little bit. And I also don't want, I do want to pull up, um, in this case, the aerial, which I think helps in this case. So let me just get the tax memo over in here. <coughs> So essentially, <clears throat> planning board uh, reviewed and approved developed Delva section uh, back in 1980 uh, in this area. And that is the one that's been used for any development um, off of uh, Watermill Tiled Road here. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's essentially the road which is not built yet. We'll go through here and we'll show you a plan of that. Um, in this case, um, oh, this is the one merge right here, right? So it, it's a lot next to it, right? This, this is where you, mer you want to abandon this road or not open that, this road. That's correct. Okay, I do have a map too, and I'll show you, go back and show you that. No, there was a plan at one point to modify a lot of these lots, but that's... That's been abandoned at this point, abandoned. yeah. So this is the original map, the plan. Uh, this is seven and then H, you can see, I'll go back to the aerial, but they've been merged. This was the road he'd like to amend the map, so this road is not open. Now, my concern with this, and, and or your concern with this too, is you want to have make sure all these lots, the south, even if they're town land or whatever, have access in the future. Aren't those the sending parcels? They are. Well, they've never really been part of a development section, but assumed on that fact is that they are sending parcels because you've never reviewed a map. To any development in this case, am I correct, Jeff? Is that correct? Yeah. And you, why don't you sit at the podium? You can come right to, just, you have a map. Come to the table, Joe. Yeah. Because yeah. we got the bikes now. He's got a better map that he just showed oh, us good. today. Oh, so. good. Good. Educate us. <laughs> yes. Go okay. ahead. Thank you, um, Joseph Gaza, by Bogdan Lane Quag. I uh, I develop old filed maps, maps which have never <laughs> been approved by the planning board, which were dated back filed with the county clerk, this one was dated 1910, before we were all born, <laughs> way before. And I work with these maps because they have problems, and I'm a problem solver, a resolver. And this particular map is, uh, shows the entire section of an old filed map, which has uh, about 20 blocks, and inside each block is a tiny lot of 20 by 100, 24 lots, so it's thousands of lots. And the planning board, since I started doing this about 40 years ago, has developed a lot of rules about regulating development on these maps because they didn't have a chance at doing it in 1910. They want a chance at doing it today. So in 1980, I'll pass these three out. The planning board, on my earlier application, says we're going to start reviewing this map because Mr. Gaza wants to start development on this map. And it had certain elements which lent itself to development. It fronted on a paved road with utilities. And it had houses nearby on the Water Mill Town Road. And the planning board in 1980 said, we're only concerned with development, Mr. Gaza, on the north end of the map. Because the south end of the map is really remote. And it's, you know, we have programs in place with transfer of development rights, which we talked about earlier, about lifting rights off of some lots to be able to build on other lots. And this is an example of that situation. So the planning board looked at this and said, we're going to allow 10 lots to be developed on the north end of this map. And the south end of the map, we anticipate using for the rights, the development rights, to be transferred up to the north end of the map. He says, the reason is that the town owns land to the south, the Kalmanuk Trail goes through the south end of the map. 
And it's the south end of the map is remote. But in 1980, the town designed a little road system, which is shown on this map, and they, they weren't sure about what was going to happen. They anticipated that it would be a good idea to see this all preserved, but they left the door open. And they left this little piece of a road, which is shown yeah. with the uh, orange arrow next to it, ocean. which... Another Ocean View Parkway. Another piece of Ocean View Park. <laughs> and Where's the Ocean View? <laughs> well, it exists in some places. It's and this. it's not really necessary today because we have uh, restudied this map, and I've gone through this with the board a couple of years back where I tried to do things with it. Didn't we, didn't we just approve yes. some houses? Uh, on, on lots number three, three and nine, there's going to be two homes. Yeah. And a road system was designed, as shown on... Yeah, I can see this. And the, the road uh, <coughs> was a difficult road to build, uh, designed to build, but it's it was accomplished. A lot of very hilly. On the, the paper is on the mic. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. You do that and the voice comes on. I'll let Mr. Mutu, our engineer, take a look at the approved road plans, Mr. Mutu. And uh, a road plan was developed. A little bit of uh, elevation uh, and slopes to this, yeah. To, to accommodate the 10 lots. And the road plan does not go to the south. And one of the reasons is that in the course of the last 20 years, I've already donated to the town about half of the land to the south for preservation. And I use this development rights up to the north. And now, I have applications with Mr. Wilcox, and the deed for, which he's holding an escrow, for the balance of all of the lands to the south, <coughs> with the exception of a couple little pieces owned by Oak Gentry, Oak Gentry from West Hampton. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be donating these parcels to the town in order to use their development rights on approved parcels. And the trails people are very interested in this because their trails go through yeah. the land that I'm offering Beautiful trail, to yeah. donate to the town. If I lift the rights off, I'm not just donating it to be a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. I am taking the rights off. Sure. So this, this little piece of a road up over here <clears throat> is not necessary. And I'd like to include it in the approved development parcel 7 to make it bigger also to eliminate uh, front yards. Combining those two lots. Seven. I've already combined lot um, seven, seven eight with and H. Seven and H. H. Okay. Yes. I've already put that together. So you have one big lot there. Did you yes. abandon the road between seven and H? I have already, okay. yes. I thought that's what we were just talking about. No, then. No, seven, and seven, seven and H. H. No. Seven and H. 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 Sorry. Yeah, you abandoned this already. Okay. Yeah. But this little piece of road called Ocean View Parkway next to uh, block I or lot number seven. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd like to, uh, with the arrow pointing yeah. towards mm -hmm. it, I'd like to uh, eliminate that as a road. So seven and H are, are one, one yeah, lot. Yeah, one, one lot now. Yeah. One lot now. And that will have access off of this new pink road. Off this pink road. Correct. Yeah. Right okay. on the corner. And then so just curves. that. Okay, so, and I remember talking maybe when you were here, Joe, at a previous meeting about how there aren't many. Uh, properties left where you could transfer development rights off of in Southampton. Correct. It's like a real shortage. So you've got a well, couple more here. Um, it's been a long haul for me to get these rights. Right. And uh, I, I brought with me today, because I thought I was going to have a little presentation for the board, but Anthony took away all my steam. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can pass this around. I have been trying to acquire development rights for my life. Right. And uh, in the town of Southampton, they come from the entire town. The problem with development rights is that the majority of maps are in West Hampton, the old filed maps, because that land was, was scrub land, didn't have much value, and developers in 1910 bought That's land that had little value, scrub in nature, they cut it up into these old maps and sold it off to people all over the United States. 
the beautiful land in Southampton, near the water, or Meacox, or Remsenburg, or West Hampton, they couldn't get their hands on. It's too expensive. Right. So that's why these old maps exist in areas that weren't as valuable. Like North Sea. Like there are Which, a bunch of them in North Sea. Where I live, so. Yeah. In North Sea, uh, uh, Henry H. Post uh, was a, uh, a woodland dealer, and he sold wood back in the early, you know, 1900, 1910. And after he cut the wood off of the woodland, the land didn't have much value. And he sold the land to Donovan and other developers from Manhattan who made old filed maps out of the woodland with no trees because it was junk land. Right. Eh? So why am I I'm going off on a tangent? With nice road yes. names. Uh, so, <laughs> the question, I, think, I think you're amenable to it. Here's my issue, and this is one of the standards, is you want to make sure that lots to the south have access. Right. Mr. Mm -hmm. Gentry. And so, Mr. Gentry, which is this parcel down here. So the rest of it is the town of Southampton lands. Um, so the problem is, as you're saying, we spoke outside, you think there's access to the east, but there's not. So, um, Joe, which, which lot on that is Oak Gentry's lot? Uh, that here. So this, those? I can point to that too. Right here. Um, and uh, so that looks. And I mean, the he, town lands. He will need too. a he will need a tremendous amount of certificates to, to be able. Oh, to he's not going to be able to develop. You're develop going it. to put Some that design. as a sending parcel. Right. Yeah. But it is still still has the right to go there, and so we don't want to prohibit that. Right. And the town land to the south. This is park. This is okay. walking trails and things like that. So yeah. what you were saying <clears throat> is that there's going to be access retained on this side. Yeah. However, it's not. Here it's blocked. This is abandoned. This goes into town land. But this is all abandoned. So yeah, how does he get in? It's all town. If, but town is not giving access to Oak Gentry. Okay. That's yeah. because Oak Gentry's land is not developable. Well, I understand, but he's it, he's allowed to have access to. And his but land. he can act. You're saying yes. he he can have access or should be able to have access over paper roads that haven't been uh, yeah, yeah. that and haven't I'm been sure abandoned. You've had conversations with Mr. Gentry. I tried, and he's not responding. I tried well, to buy his land. Luckily, <laughs> right. we That's were it. outside, okay. and we were outside, and Carlo Nicosta represents Oak Gentry. So, oh, so we maybe. spoke to him. Yeah. So this is, I am comfortable with this as long as there's an alternate access and we identify that very clearly. Mm -hmm. um, if you abandon right. half of this, Half of this would be still available, but they would not be able to abandon it. Eight would not be able to abandon it. So that may be another way to do it. And but right now, this is merged in. It's townlands. And it's impossible off of the, the map down. I guess that's to the north for him to get access another way. Well, this is the map. You want to do it from the map. This is all rights. They have rights of the road in the map. Right. Not so, yeah. There may be okay. off site, but this is part of the but fundamental we gotta, rights. We have yeah. to focus on it. Yeah. Right? Well, um, as Claire mentioned, these streets have already been abandoned. Right. Okay. But the town has in the past looked at old file map This lots. whole street is not abandoned to his property. Oh. None of this is fully abandoned. So he, this, this is a, this I'm concerned with because that is okay. fully abandoned right. on the east okay. side. So. Okay. The, the town so, also requires, in order for a lot to be even considered as a building lot, to be at least 30,000 square feet yeah. in area. So that is yeah. not a And these parcels do not meet that criteria. So their value is in their development rights. And the planning board has in the past actually landlocked properties by abandonment of streets because they are never going to be developed. Yeah. An it's example would be money. off of, well, <laughs> right. they, they have in the past. After studying, and determining that the lots would not be suitable or even approvable for building purposes and that their value was in their rights. Right. Everything is going to be town owned. I'm going to give it all to the town, with the exception of these little oak gentry pieces. There's only one. Right. And so we'll get that clarified. So well, if, if the town owns that property directly north mm -hmm. and he's a member of that, that doesn't that suggest public? Not access? if it's on a road. Not if it's not a road. If half of it was abandoned, yes, he'd still have the road to go over. But, but can know. he traverse directly over town land? If he pretends he's going there for a trail, but to access his property mm -hmm. for his rights, I, I would be very mm -hmm. suspect without you know getting our town attorney to weigh in on that. Joe, so which lot did you want to add that <coughs> abandonment to? Seven or eight? Uh, seven. I want this little piece right here. So I mean, doesn't doesn't affect this over here anyway. Right. It says, "Oh, this has been abandoned." Right. 
I guess one question is if you did half half the rule as abandonment and added it to seven. But then he can't merge a lot. You want to merge that? No, no I know. No, no. I've merged he's lots merged seven already. and five. But eight would H. not be, you know, in that case, okay. we wouldn't say no to eight to be abandoned because yeah. that would be the access yeah. to okay. Okay. which you could do. Yeah. They would still have you access. Half an abandonment? You get access. And then half the road, leave, leave, leave half of the paper road as, as access to Oak yeah. Gentry's lot down the right, road. You could right. do that. Yeah. On this map, where's Oak Gentry lot? Uh, it's it's down. Down. It's down. Yeah, it's, yeah. Down. Okay. it's, uh, it's way down. That's okay. going to be. But the preferable thing be would be now that you have contact with his attorney, mm -hmm. Carl Glenn and Casa, it, it may be a non issue if we just, you know, pursue that, see yeah. if you can obtain that lot, and then we could approve or say what, what you're proposing if he's easily. If, if right? he's not interested, he doesn't care and about And then access. we can consider it. But I think that's might be worth it, right, if, if you want to get that. I, I, I try. Uh, you I'll reached speak out to, to Oak directly? I called. I spoke to his secretary. He's not calling me back. I called. I've written mm -hmm. him. Um, you know, he knows who I am. I know who he is. We, we you know, we're, it's like Gaza and Broidy. You know, <laughs> 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 I've sort of been the same thing. But, but now that Carl is on the, uh, on the matter, right. uh, Carl will make, explain to uh, Mr. Gentry that you know, if you <clears throat> abandon the streets next to Mr. Gentry's property, you pick up a little extra area, right. a little extra rice, extra and his rice. property would become even a little bit more valuable for its rights. Mm -hmm. And then you could get some of those certificates. Right. Well, which, I'm going to give these back to you okay, now. Yeah. <laughs> I have about 20 So 20 let, me, let me investigate that, but I think you're inclined to grant it either, either way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do exactly. we have to act now, or do we wait? I'd little, like to investigate little, it. Little yeah, right. yeah, because when so, I went this over with Dave, he said very clearly you should leave access to I parcels. Can see that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So to be clear, the only two uses for Oak Gentry's land are to transfer to development rights or for him to go look at the pretty trees. Yes. Okay. Yes. Which camping. Okay. <laughs> I know well right. he, he doesn't want to camp. <laughs> <laughs> Well, these are just called glamping, so you can. Yeah, he's got a house near by. He's in North Sea now. Oh, I thought he was in West So, one way or another, we'll regroup on this in the future. Yes. Okay. Uh, just to conclude, if, if one looks at all my credits that I've been accumulating, 98% of them are from West Hampton because there's hardly any development right parcels left in South Hampton School right. District, yep. right. which is why. You know, you, I guess why you That's allowed me to use 50 percent, and um, you know, it's it's Pine Barrens land. It's it's the same aquifer. It's, it's it's valuable land to be protected, but it's just shifting it over a little bit. And in the West Hampton <coughs> School District, there are there's I think there's only two maps, old filed maps, that exist in areas that can be developed. Yeah. So there's no place to even use West Hampton by rights. By the we right right. Down from the bayou, we but mm. where it crosses yeah. railroad tracks, you get Fifth Avenue and, and right. a couple little. But, the, yeah. but these can be used for sewage credit if if, the, if somebody is doing. Is it the same one for one? Or? Health department hasn't recognized. Oh these. really? Okay. They, they recognize Pine Barren credits, but not oh. town development rights certificates. Okay. I didn't know that. Now they can be used for land clearing. However, the planning board has a policy that credits uh, emanating from the West Hampton area. West of the Shinnecock Canal should be used for clearing west of the canal, right. and if you want to clear east of the canal, you have to use credits coming from North Sea area mm -hmm. east of the canal, which is tough to get. Mm -hmm. right. So, um, I I've been holding some of these credits, you know, for 15 years, and I'm anxious to try to start using them mm. now that I'm you know, going to be 73 years old. <laughs> well, I want to accomplish cashing these credits in, and that's why uh, i trying to land them on some of my properties to, to use them while I can still do it. Mm -hmm. okay. 70 is a new 50, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll take my clothes off and you can make that decision. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that's pretty <laughs> well. On that note. <laughs> On that note, I'll leave it. Thank here. you for the time. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Good to see you, as always. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Joe.
Uh, Claire, where are you taking us? My next one is Sunrise at Spion. Sunrise at Spion, okay. I had passed out a copy of this map plan, but yeah. just in case you didn't have it with you, here's another version. You got the, uh, same so as the one, there's no action. Same as the one yesterday, no, yeah, exactly. Um, so this is the site in Spion Fremsburg on Spion Fremsburg Head Road, 1313. Um, they, they, Briefly, they want to do something similar to this, a smaller building on the south side with parking associated with it. So I do have the design, which is very standard Morton here. And I thought I had a site plan. I think the site plan gets kicked out every time I try to, to do it. Let me open it up, though. So there is the site plan on the project. So I prepared a uh, the staff report. Um, and then I'm gonna adopt it at the next meeting. So we'll just briefly go over it. It's 3,000 square foot footprint, 4,065 total. It's got a mezzanine in the, in the building. Um, there was a pre-submission conference, December 8th, um, and there were no comments received during the conference <laughs> or the 30-day written comment period. Uh, it is Central Pine Barrens compatible growth in a POD. Um, they're proposing, they're taking the entire site and they're assuming that there's not existing clearing. So I just want to uh, go back to the aerial real quick, and I can open it up on GIS also. But you can see that there was an existing clearing. That's associated with the treatment of the, the plume adjacent oh, to the yeah. property. Um, and then this would be the runoff area that they had for the water that was treated. Um, and uh, so that caused this to be cleared. This, this occurred about two, 2013-ish. I don't see it in the 2010 aerial, but I see it in 2014. So um, I've gone to the site. This is really quality uh, woodlands here in the fronts, and this is very clear. To, there's, but there's quite a, a slope here. Um, so my one question I brought up is whether, and this is number two, is whether um, you'd want to maybe tuck it into the back because that's the existing clearing. Um, you know, I haven't talked to the applicant about this yet, rather than disturb the area in front. So uh, that may be something you want to consider. This is, again, the site plan here. Um, but this is a this is little bit flatter here. Um, and then there's a slope right in the middle. So it might be logistics of planning the property. Uh, they're doing outdoor storage, special exception. Of course, the town engineer, it's an unlisted action. The size of the buildings, uh, some additional parking may be necessary uh, for the storage. Um, the architecture, they don't prov uh, it's not much to speak of in terms of architecture. Um, typically, we just kind of dress up the front if it's visible from the road, but again, if it's tucked in the back, it may be a moot point. Um, so that's that. They need to indicate a dumpster. The parking is sufficient, just the ADA space needs to be eight feet wide. They provide a fire lane around the building, um, which I, I'm not quite sure why it's it's proposed, but it may be required. And then screen mechanicals, the lighting, and then we talk about, I talk a little bit about this Bianc solvent plume. In this case, most people don't put basements. There's no basements on this road, so. Do the other buildings around there have fire lane? No, no, but it may be, I'm thinking it might be appropriate if it was any type of wooden building because of potential for fires in yeah. the Pine Barrens. Yeah. But it was interesting. You can see it. It's on the site plan that they have a fire lane along the whole mm -hmm. um, building. So and I'm sure the fire marshal have some comments on that. So yeah, that's uh, just all on the issues. Um, we could adopt it today if you're inclined. Okay. The applicants, uh, need to get these okay, or we can okay. adopt it at the next meeting. Is it, did they do anything to address up the architecture? Or is it no, not yet, but yes. In the architecture, do you want me to say more? Um, the proposed building will be reviewed by the AARB. Um, um, colors and materials should be noted, which is the, not. Do you want yeah. to say something about the architecture? Yes, just augment, uh, you know, attention should be, you know, paid to, or augmentation to, uh, incorporate residential elements. You know, usually they do that split stone facade and a couple of you know, just so it doesn't look like a big metal box. They what is the they one pretty next much to look it? Like look big metal box. <laughs> right, I was going to say, maybe it's, it's like lipstick it's on a pig. No, no. Well, you know, West Hampton 
the glass that, that came out pretty nice. Yeah. Landros building is there, chipset evergreen mm -hmm. is along that stretch. They all yeah. have uh, like a feature, it just breaks it up. Office. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right next to this building. Right it's next? a big metal box. It was a big but metal it, box. Okay, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's before across, I arrived. <laughs> across, the street, across the street is, uh, what is it, West Hampton Glass? Yeah. yeah. And that building's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, that turned yeah. out really nice. Yeah, yeah. showroom there, everything. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Do we throw in solar and electric vehicles? Going yeah. Under so, yeah, with that change, I can be okay. adopted so if you like. Okay, we can adopt this. It's okay. good. Okay. Move motion. Move motion. Motion by Glorian. Second. Second by Craig. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six yes. And Jeff, take us through these clearing. Oh, do I have oh, one? Oh, we did. We got two. one more. I have two completenesses. Oh, completeness. Yes. Or are these walk-ons? Nope. They're on number 11 and 13. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sabonic. Sorry. Another Sabonic. Sabonic, okay. Page 48. This is one you had a pre-submission not too far long ago on. Um, and uh, they have submitted a site plan. It is complete, uh, except the town engineer had some changes that they needed to do. So I'm going to deem it incomplete pending the town engineer. Okay. Please. Motion for incomplete? Yep. Motion. Motion by George. Second. Second by Kate. All in favor? Aye. 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 Six yes. And, and then you have Lewis Puccio Puccio. Long Mat, item yes. 13. Yes, exactly. That is page 56, by the way. That one is complete. Um, you had already done Secra because this is one that went to the Zoning Board Appeals for the waiver of the parking. Um, and so in this case, uh, I'm that they have submitted everything they need. And I'm recommending public hearing for February 9th. Nice tonight, and, that, and that's okay. Good. Great. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Glorian. Second. Second by uh, Craig. All in favor? Aye. 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 Six yes. And good. I'm done. I am done. Um, okay, now. The maps are going to be signed, obviously. I do have 31 off the agenda. Possibly. 31 is off the best she's of Paul She's got the district. other maps. Which yeah. is yeah. Okay. 31 is off the agenda. Yeah. Very good. Okay, Jeff. Crank them out. One, two, three, four. Sorry, the packets. Oh, you want my packets? Yes. Yep. Jeff, which number? 22. 22. Oh, did not make tax. Okay, good. So Save me. Save me having a look. Okay, thank you. Oh, you signed here. D. Edward Burke, Matt. D. Edward Burke. Right, but usually it says by the town class. Right, it's 46,274 square foot big. lot uh, encroached in, in the covenanted conservation yeah, easement that's area. That's um, so this is not your usual site disturbance application. This is essentially to restore. Look on survey here. It's covenanted buffer area here, uh, which is on the north. Easterly side or northwesterly side, and this here, which is actually on the uh, southwesterly side or easterly side. Uh, this ecology here is your usual pitch pine oak forest. Uh, the applicant submitted a reveg plan that would restore uh, that area, that buffer area, or conservation easement area, to be specific. Um, you know. You can see a good idea of the proposed plantings, an area for the plantings. So that's along Noyak Road? So, so yes, along yeah, Noyak Road is a long tra uh, trail, actually, or driveway. The restaurant's on the corner, Tom. Okay. Yeah. Was it Mick? Um, okay. Or is it Dowling's? Dowling's, Dowling's right. You right. turn it Dowling's. Uh, Berkshire Road, if you know right. that. That's the first uh, left. So we review the revegetation plan, and we believe that the, uh, the proposed plan should bring the property back into compliance. Uh, and we are considering this approved, or for your consideration. Okay. Any questions? We have a motion for approval. 
Motion. Motion by Kate, second by uh, Craig. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those abstentions. We have six yes, one absent. And you've got Northside Hills. That North is Northside Hills. Uh, also in the general, same general area, actually. Yep. A little ways so up the road. Down the road. Yep. Down the road, up the road. Yep. <laughs> I know it well. This applicant um, disturbed about 14.8% of their natural vegetation where 50% is allowed. Uh, I actually walked the property along with the applicants. Uh, they disturbed this general area here. They do have an application before the building department, uh, actually a permit before the building department. They're trying to get it signed off for CO. Uh, they're proposed this vegetation, which is also pitch pine oak forest as well as in terms of ecology. Uh, so their proposed uh, revetch plan includes some choke berries, some uh, ink berries, low bush <coughs> and high bush uh, blueberries, uh, and some oaks. There's some uh, existing oaks on the property, uh, and they want to increase, uh, if you notice on this map here, um, the vegetation on this rear, on the rear of the uh, property itself. I'll give you an aerial as well. So at first glance, it'd be tough to see, but they cleared this general area here. Mm. And when I walked, it is essentially just mulch, no understory. So they're proposed to vegetate all this area here, maintaining some of the existing vegetation as well. These evergreens here that are not native are not included. So they're, they're taking the evergreens out? Uh, they're not going to take the evergreens out. They're going to add on to the oh, evergreens. Add on. Okay. Had the surveyor uh, provide a ca recalculation, re uh, excluding the evergreens <coughs> to see if they would meet it without it, and they do meet it as proposed. So they, you have them do the cleared area, and this where that area. lawn is, yep. it looks like a lawn. So all this area that looks essentially like uh, sand right. will be vegetated. There are some existing uh, canopies, some trees, some, <laughs> some oaks like I mentioned. When, when you take out the vegetation, you, you get beach sand. Yeah, you went, essentially. You know, uh, it's, it's understory. You only, you only go like four, four or five inches and you're in beach sand. Essentially, yeah. yeah. And I actually had to get an argument with the surveyor. They didn't want to con uh, consider this to be cleared. I sent him pictures and video uh, as I walked the property and did a site inspection. Uh, so they went back to revise the survey to deem this uh, <coughs> over cleared. Mm -hmm. the, uh, Good job, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he actually even asks, uh, what do we consider overcleared? Well, uh, your surveyor, yeah, at this point, you would think they, uh, the they knew this. But you know, we get a lot, they keep the trees and they put chem oh, yeah. lawn underneath yeah. and they say, it's not clear. Here are the trees. Oh, that's ridiculous. It's, it's the understory that really... Often, yeah. Oh, 100%. So when, presuming we approve this, mm -hmm. they then go back in, you know, April or something when the weather's good, put the shrubbery in, or the, mm -hmm. you know, restore it, and then call you to have you come out and re-inspect? Is that That's correct. how the so, process? Uh, we charge a $125 inspection fee uh, for each inspection. So if I get, uh, get there and the site itself is not uh, consistent with the approved plan, I have to go back again and they have to actually put in the appropriate plantings. I can so tell you with process. this weather they've been planting straight through. Oh. Landscapers are out there planting? They are. Today? They so are. Um, I have a few instances where uh, property owners want to close on properties or in the process of selling and want to open up a bond. And I told them we're not in the practice of that. No. Uh, Claire even mentioned that I think we have a bond from maybe 10 years ago yeah. that still is open. <laughs> uh, so they're, they wanted to present to the board and see if the board would have any recommendations or any yeah. alternative uh, ways of uh, addressing this. And I told them, sorry. Yeah, you have yeah, to find another plan. option outside of uh, the planning board. You know, you know bond is, is, is not, especially in this area, people just write a check and yeah. here's yeah. my bond and leave. It's not like a commercial site plan where if the bushes have uh, died along the side of the road, you can hire a landscaper and oh, yeah. call the bond. 
to enter a private property with gates and privacy and dogs and <coughs> the practicalities of yeah, enforcing the bond yeah. are, are so that's why we don't take bonds on private residential parcels mm -hmm. as and opposed to site plans and that's why so much is over cleared because unless yeah. they come to the town for some other reason exactly well that's when they get yeah, yeah. Or, 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 or a billing or neighbor permit or complains right. usually, usually on a sale or application of a building permit yeah yep. so those two are the high uh most common scenarios. Good. So um, you're good with the uh, vegetation? Yes. Uh, yeah. I believe the uh, plan itself should bring this property back into compliance. Very good. Do we have a motion to Northside Hills? Motion. Motion by Gloria, second by uh, Tom. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> we have six yes. We have William White. Have two more to go for you. Yeah, so William, William White, White is uh, watermelon, too. Little Noyak pad, close by. Okay. 344 Noyak pad. 344 Noyak pad. That's another road that comes and goes and. Yeah. Now, this plan, uh, they are over cleared by 1.9%. Uh, so are they planting one tree? <laughs> 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 a couple bushes and pulling it it's in. A, it's a pretty large piece, though. This is a 185,714 uh, square foot eight, uh, lot. Um, so this 1.9 percent is approximately around 3,800 square feet. Uh, the general revegetation re area <clears throat> is really only comprised near this parking area in the rear of the property. As per the survey, it does equate to 3,800 and should bring this into compliance. Uh, there's really no need for additional um, uh, canopy. Uh, he's proposing essentially low bush blueberries, uh, chokeberries, uh, and inkberries as well, uh, and some bayberries in this area. He did the plan himself, I'm sure you can tell. Okay. But it should it should bring this property into compliance. Uh, the, the property itself is virtually uh, preserved. I believe 144,000 square feet outside of this general area. Okay. Okay. Very good. Do we have a motion for William White? Motion. Motion by Gloria. Second. Second by Kate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those abstentions. Six yes. And we have Peter Horn. Big day for watermelon. Closing the water mill. Yeah, right. <laughs> A lot of these properties are kind of off the beaten path. Yeah. So you know, driving by, you'd never know. Well, they all are. Water mill heights. Yeah. This one's adjacent to water mill heights, actually. This was a large piece, uh, which I believe also has the power lines running through the rear of it. Mm -hmm. This is off of, off of Deerfield. Oh, yes, off of Deerfield. Deerfield. It's one in the red. The one in the red, yes. It's a pretty long driveway. Um, Bob White does uh, come off of Deerfield, as you mentioned, Gloria. Um, this is a new construction that's virtually also completed. Probably yeah, too blurry for your view. Ecology here also is pitch pine oak forest. Uh, lot size is approximately 300,000 uh, 300, uh, square feet. Um, the planting plan is pretty extensive. I'm not sure you'd be able to see all of it <coughs> here. Let me see if I can zoom out for you. project itself is completely built. Uh, they are awaiting, obviously, their CL as well. Uh, and for the CL, they do need to complete this re vegetation plan. Uh, but the plantings are consistent with uh, the native planting list I provided them as well, and also should bring this back to compliance. 
What's really sad about this is that this is a very large lot, so there was yeah. really no reason to overclear. No, absolutely not. Yeah. You um, know, it's not like you have to get the septic in or s right. on a, oh, more more house than the size of the lot really can handle. They, the this builders, is just sloppy. No, you're right. You're right. I think builders like to work on a clean slate. It's easier for them to maneuver, mm -hmm. uh, but it does disturb and destroy, unfortunately, and, uh, some and of the natural vegetation. And what's put back is not anywhere like what was taken out. Right. No. Right. Yeah. Shame. They seem to have some very steep slopes in, this, in that area. Uh, what's the percentage they were overcleared there? Uh, really? In totality, the percentage is 5.8%. Oh, that's a lot. That's, that's per a, the survey. That's, six, that's 30,000 square feet. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. <coughs> So you've reviewed the planting list? Yep, reviewed the plan, reviewed the planting list. I, I did a site inspection as well. Uh, there are some slopes back here, but uh, it's already been developed. <coughs> All right, well, that's that. So for your consideration. Yeah, okay, very good. Do we have a motion for Deerhorn? Motion. Motion by Gloria. Second. Second by George. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Can I just ask a question? What it, so what is the penalty um, for overclearing? Obviously, they have to fix it with their re reveg plan. But what is the well, two things that we kind of do is uh, their charge mechanism. <laughs> the mechanism is it's a, it's a difficult one. Um, the one thing we, that we do is as part of this approval. They cannot get a CO until we've inspected it and we sign off on it. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, uh, we do charge them double the fee. So an application, uh, site disturbance application is generally $1,600. Uh, in this instance, it's $3,200. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily always a happy camper when I mention that. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously something of this substantial, I mean, uh, this build is quite substantial, multi-million dollar mm -hmm. property. So it's difficult to kind of hit them even harder. but. Uh, but the reality, though, is that for some of these properties out there, that's a pit. They'd much rather pay that fee and revenge yeah, right. to, to get what they want. Honestly, if we even offered the bond, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to <laughs> do the bond. Holding up the CO and... on a new construction is pretty pretty good way of uh, getting no, their absolutely. attention. Absolutely. Um, uh, especially if they're looking to close pretty quickly. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Well, unfortunately, it's a mild winter, so they can go ahead and plant it. Start doing it. Yeah. It for the time <laughs> being. We'll see what happens. time of year you for the snow on the ground. I think Very good. Uh, George is out tonight, but I think everyone else is in. We have a yeah. tight forum. I'll be here. Yeah. Good. Okay. And Thank I'll you. be Thank away you. that week of the meeting on the 23rd. 23rd? Yeah. You're out on the 23rd? Mm -hmm. ne uh, January or February? The February 23rd. February. Oh, the February. one where we're okay. assigning a lot of things to. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe, as maybe as if you could circulate an email so Jackie picks it up. I will, yeah. Okay. Great, Kate. Good. Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Well, George, second by Glorian. We'll see you at 6 with the exception of George. Good job, folks. Okay.